Of course. Wow. Somebody gonna be famous. Real famous. <laughs> I sit here writing to you now with my exceptionally long penis very deeply and normally into my vagina butt. Isn't that neat? Tony Hunter 77 has joined the game. Call 911. This place is even swatted. It's a You don't find people being bullied into suicide on 4chan. I mean, this is ridiculous. Okay, if he says any more bad words, I'm going to hang up on him. He doesn't own Key Farm, and he died laughing at a little kid named Moon on Key Farm. How do they make this more and more epic every time? I'm sorry, I'm a soy filled bitch with like videos. If we get Donald Trump just to tweet out, I mean, it, you know, d just a tweet that mentions the hashtag game again, it, it, it doesn't even necessarily matter how we use it. Man, the blue check marks are going to shit their fucking hands. It's 2019, I can't believe anybody believes that. It's a fucking ball of water. True. I bet you when Jim finds out, he's gonna just give me so much shit. One never knows when the homosexual is about. I've had over 1,000 rejections in real life, 2,000 rejections online, so that's 3,000 rejections total. I aim as well as possible. I aim for obese women, ugly women, ideally ugly and obese. I would do anything just for a 300 pound ugly white girl. I said it's not even You are not allowed to bring her to the hospital. No. No, you can get no permission to fucking do it. You gotta be kidding. It's, it's just like this declaration. This declaration, right, of male dominance. Uh, put that in your pipe. I definitely cheated on Super Mario with Sonic the Hedgehog. Stop doing this stuff. He's like the blue uh, seductress who takes me out into the night and does wonderful things to me. Enough! Stop! <laughs> How can a Yorkshire Terrier live in the wild? It's in plain sight, but you just don't see it. You know what I mean? Haters on YouTube are on the verge of flooding with hate comments. Cause you got that. Cause you got that. Must wake up. Cause you got that. Must like that. Oh, 
Balls of Steel. Oh my God, no. Blow it out your ass. Well, good evening, my fellow chud butts. How has a month been treating you? Let me get let me get the scroll off the screen. We don't need that. Get that the fuck out of here. God, the year's just flying by. Shit's happening so quick it's hard to keep track of. I don't even know what to really call this month. You know, the whole uh, a year of the chud thing is really laughing at retards online, which is highly entertaining. I mean, you can't not like to do that. But the world's got to get so fucking serious on us. With its World War III and its recession and all the other shit going on, you just can't let us have our little corner of the internet to laugh at stupid people and have a good time. It's got to be all dark. It's got to be all grim dark. Go Warhammer 40k on our asses. So I'll have to, I have to talk a little bit about that today. <laughs> on the off chance that like tomorrow we get wiped out in some nuclear apocalypse because two countries I don't give a shit about are throwing fists at each other. I'm sorry, I don't care about international politics. I'm an American. I say let them blow each other up and then we can bulldoze their heritage sites and build some Walmarts. Let's place some McDonald's down in Moscow and in Kiev. Fuck them both. It's time for some Walmarts and McDonald's. Let's go. It's the American way. All right, there's no, there's no Team UN and NATO. There's no Team Z in Russia. It's Team fucking Walmart. Let's go. Come on, boys. Think of all the old people we could employ. All right, we're getting over this pandemic shit. Everybody, nobody's got a job. You can be a Walmart greeter in Moscow. We just got to bulldoze a few of their churches. Come on. I think this is really the economic way forward. It's forward thinking. It's what I call a real America first kind of proposal. <sighs> well, at least we made it to the end of September. Will, will we make it till December? I don't know. Will I personally make it to December? I don't know. Will all of you? Probably not either. <laughs> it's nuclear bright. That's the bright future that's ahead of us. Fun times. How's the month been treating you, chat? How have things been going? Oh, got to have a little, have a little bit of my soda there. I know, what's a, what's a new term to refer to that shit? Goislop? Mmm, delicious. I love my liquidated, my liquefied goislop. Delicious. High fructose corn syrup sounds healthy as shit to me. You know, I had a real Pepsi. I drink Pepsi, by the way. I had a real Pepsi recently uh, with the sugar in it. Wow, was that awful. Very different from what my memory was like. It almost makes me want to go back and try Crystal Pepsi again just to give it a second chance because maybe it's not as fucking awful as I thought it was. Because back in the day when I tried Crystal Pepsi, I made the mistake of drinking it warm, which is probably a, mis you know, a fuck up of its own level of catastrophe. Uh, but it tasted like, I don't know, cat piss and paint thinner combined. I, I don't know if like, taking the color out of it made it taste a thousand times worse. I don't know if that was a marketing scheme that Pepsi Cola was going for. A very terrible, terrible stuff. Oh, now I got the burps. Oh, my God. I'm going to pull a Ralph. I'm going to start shitting and farting everywhere. Oh, if you hear any funny noises, clip it, boys, because I sharted myself. Don't let me get away from it. It's a shart. <laughs> it's a Pepsi-induced shart. There's no, there's no running and hiding it from it. Well, I think you all know, right, how this, how this goes. We start to stream up. Okay, we do we do some intro videos, a little bit of music. I'm an old boomer fuck, so it's always the same music. I can't find new shit. It's either those two videos or Rama Rama. That's all you get. And then I immediately go in and I show my merchandise. Because I'm a whore and I have no shame. All right, because that's how men sell hats. Oh my God, look at that. I'm being a whore. Go to the Selfie store, buy a fucking hat. Everybody loves a hat. By the way, Deadbeat Dad Collection's still up. Ralph claims he's paid his back child support. He owes nothing. I don't believe him. 
But on the off chance that he actually did do it, because we shamed him into it with a t-shirt. This is your last chance, because I'm pulling it out of the store. <laughs> this is the last chance you can officially buy this and actually have it be a factual fucking statement. Nobody's going to know what the fuck it refers to. You're going to be walking down the street or in a store and people are going to give you weird looks. And you're going to have to explain internet shit to them. It's going to be very uncomfortable. So, you know, uh, go to the store and buy dumb shit. Now, uh, I did promise too that I would do this uh, in regards to, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the little swatting incident that happened. Uh, just to give you a quick refresher. Because uh, we have every county deputy here right now. We have 15. Well, I'm serious. We have 15 deputies. We have fire. We have M Health. We have ambulances. We have everybody here. Everybody's here. I was like, oh, you know, I'll do like a cute little fucking uh, hat or a T-shirt or something related to, you know, getting swatted. And I did. <laughs> so I, I don't know. I'll leave it up for like a month. There's the Swatty Squad shit. Their hats and a T-shirt. There you go. I fucking I actually did it. I got off my lazy Irish ass and I did it. And it's sitting there. By the way, I love the model they chose for this. Very Eastern European. She probably can't speak the language. Doesn't know what she's wearing. Very confused. You know, it makes me want to just, you know, come up with designs that say horrific things to get people to model them. Because they have no say over it. They've signed away their image rights to this to this store. So, like, they can't they can't say no. They're, like, beholden to Selfie that they, they can't say no. I could make that fucking hat say anything I want. I could make I could make her say horrendous things. Just horrendous things. And it looks completely natural and real and there's nothing she can do about it. Same with the guy down there who probably got the right idea and is like ducking under the brim of the hat so you can't really see who he is. So nobody could ever take that picture and then be like, holy shit, did you see what this guy was wearing? You see what this guy was wearing at the Selfie store that Mr. Medica runs? Fucking buy a hat. <laughs> okay. I think I've been enough of a whore. Have I? Yeah, I think so. Maybe. Oh, God. Hopefully Kurt Eichenwald isn't watching right now. Otherwise, he's having seizures and thinking of tentacles. Stop it, Jim. I'm going to get my lawyers to come after you. That's flashing too fast. Sorry, Mr. Eichenwald. I just, I can't. I can't help myself. Can I do a Medicare clock on the store, someone asked? Yes. Should I put my dumb fucking face on it? Should we call it Helsing 2.0? You know, Helsing back in the day. Uh, one of the early pioneers of monetizing literally anything on the internet. Uh, he's dead now, by the way. A lot of dead YouTubers out there. Anyway, uh, he, he put his face on a clock. Why you would do that, I don't know. The clock didn't do anything special when it hit like midnight or something or six. It's just his fucking face on a clock that he sold for like $35. I don't think he ever sold one of those fucking clocks. Tried it with, uh, he tried it with notebooks too. Didn't really work out very well. I guess there's like a limit to how much grifting you can do before people just are turned off by it. But you, of course, my audience, you don't have that limit. That's why you're going to go to the store and buy many hats. <clears throat> because I have no shame. Oh, so should we do, what, what should we do first? There's been a lot of weird shit this month. <laughs> There's been a lot of weird shit this month. But you know what? I'm going to start it off with the super spy. Now, chat. I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but there is a man by the name of Michael Alberto. He's also known online as Zanny Berries, who's deep undercover right now in America First. Now, I wasn't aware of this until recently when he finally started telling people this on Discord. But apparently he's been deep undercover in the movement, gathering data on everyone. And they are completely oblivious to this. Michael Alberto is the inside man. And he runs one of the most dedicated AHOG accounts there is on social media to fuck with Nick Fuentes and Ethan Ralph. He is a fucking super spy. Now, recently, I think a little retaliation's going on, a little tit for tat, a little mafiosa action, because Mr. Alberto sadly had his account suspended. It's it's gone, rip in peace. Saddened ain't on, I guess was the Twitter account he was using. It's gone. It's up. Poof into this guy. What took Michael Alberto out? He's so good at being undercover when it comes to fucking with America first. Well, he thinks 
if I had to guess what caused the account to go down, it was probably for interacting closely with Nick's new account. I don't know, lasted from June to basically October. I don't think so. You see, Michael's been tasked with something from uh, the Grand Master, uh, Nick Fuentes himself. Uh, to give you a little a little idea of what's going on, let's have Ethan Ralph explain it. What the uh, sacred task that's been given to Michael Alberto, who they're still unaware, is deep undercover. What that task that's been given to him is. Fuentes has discovered that Michael Alberto is operating the Zannyberries account in an effort to A-log Ralph. In a surprise twist, Nick has given Alberto the go-ahead to make a documentary on what a fat fuck-up Ralph is. Well, you know, that fat fuck-up has just absolutely... There you go. So Michael Alberto has been given the heads up. He's been given the go-ahead. Nick's given him the wink, a little tap on the shoulder to deal with the fat fuck-up that is Ethan Ralph. And Nick himself says that. He's commissioned a report. Oh, man, that's funny. That was such a weird gay thing, though, because I was, the whole time, I'm like, why does everyone hate this guy? What did he do? What's even the, pr and they're like, well, he's fat. I'm like, okay, but that's not a reason you hate someone. That's something you say about someone after you hate them. So what's the real? And they're like, well, he's like a scumbag. He like had this thing with his girlfriend. I'm like, seriously, who cares about what he does with this? Seriously? And there's no real answer. It's just some, I don't even get it. I don't know, some weird vor. Michael Alberto's got to get to the bottom of it. Can we get, I'm, I'm, I am authorizing the Alberto Commission. The Alberto Commission. Nick is so hands off with Ethan Ralph. Doesn't, doesn't understand the lore. He does, but doesn't understand the lore. He's, do you know what a, what a tragic fate that is? Like when people talk, okay, there's a, a guy on YouTube that did a comprehensive uh, like history of Chris Chan. And I swear to God, each part is like fucking an hour long. And it's on part 58 or 60 by now. That's the task that Nick Fuentes has given Michael Deep Cover Alberto. That's, that's what he's looking forward to. I'm passing a law. We're creating the Alberto Commission. And I am, I am appointing him to get to the bottom of this. I am appointing Michael Alberto as the top prosecutor, the top investigator. And he's going he's gonna to author the Alberto Commission... And he's going to owe us a report at the end of the next fiscal year. And we need to know how all this happened. Because we don't know. We need to get to the bottom of it. I don't know. I still don't know. I don't know the lore. I don't know the drama. I don't know how, how all this happened. They were all friends at one point. Now they all are obsessed with Ralph and hate him. I don't know how that happened. I'm, I'm a Zoomer. So I'm... Uh, Appointing Alberto to lead a commission to investigate and deliver a a final report and a decisive judgment on explaining what happened here. Because a, a decisive report, a commission, a commission. Michael Alberto, deep cover. Michael's now got to go and put this together for Nick. And then mysteriously, mysteriously, after Nick talks about this, what happens? Banned. You want to know why Michael was banned? Because Michael was asking the tough questions. Did that man eat poop on film? Yes, he did. Did he like the taste of it? Yes, he fucking did. Was he sniffering and slobbering all over his hoofs like a pig in heat? Yes, he was. Mmm, tasty shit. Ethan Ralph loves the taste of poop. And Michael Alberto got too close to the fucking truth for his own good. So they had to take him out. Because you can't have Michael Alberto deep cover Michael Alberto. Tell him the folks on Cozy what a shit-loving motherfucker Ethan Ralph is. <laughs> so they kneecapped him. They took him out in the beginning. It's fucking tragic. It's like having a, a horse head in your bed. You know, it's a, it's a message from the mafia. Hey, you're getting too close to the truth here. You can't be telling people this guy likes to taste of human shit. Which he does. He finds it delicious. I know you're watching, Ralph. I know your audience is watching right now. And you ate that shit like a fat kid at a cake factory. It was the tastiest fucking thing you've ever seen. Your thumbs were going hyperspeed. You were moving your hands around so fast, I thought you were a fucking Power Ranger. I was waiting for you to transform or something, motherfucker. <laughs> There's some dinosaurs and shit coming in from the windows, Ralph. Those thumbs were moving so fast. We all know you liked it. You liked the taste of it. You can't deny it. You put the video up for everybody to see. That's how you got the conviction. 
We've seen the tape. And so did Mr. Michael Alberto, who's putting that commission together. Now, will the video be any good? I have no idea. <laughs> Michael Alberto deliver? I have uh, no idea. All I know is he is deep fucking cover right now. So, folks, if you can, please don't blow his cover in America First and let any of the people in America First know that Michael Alberto is Zanny Berries. Okay, they thought it was Dame Pesos, but turns out Dame Pesos was just in hiding for a few years, working on his uh, grand TYT video that now he's released, so he's back. So it only leaves one other suspect. Michael Alberto is Zanny Berries, running that account. We all fucking know it. It's out there for the world to see. Got too close to the truth on the poop eating and had to take him out. Couldn't couldn't have him run in his mouth. <laughs> what a life, Michael. What are you? <laughs> like, are you really going to do like a Gino? Uh, is it Gino Samuel? I saw some people in chat saying that. I'm guessing that's the guy that did the Chris Chan video. Is that uh, you going to do a 60 part fucking video series? That's arduous. Like, doing a two-hour-long video makes you want to eat a bullet. I don't know how you're going to make it to part 60. I don't know how Gino does it, to be honest with you. Like, I've, I've watched all of it because I have no life. I, I What can I say? I, I've watched all. I've watched 60 hours of a Chris Chad documentary. What the hell happened to me? <laughs> but I watched it. I bet a lot of people out there watched it as well. It was fairly well done. But um, I don't know if I could sit through 60 hours of Ralph. I mean, I have more first-person experience with that shit. It's not like I was hanging out with Christian. Not like I was watching Christian meltdown. I saw that with Ralph, though. <laughs> so could, could, I, could I stand 60 hours of it? Oh, I don't know. Probably not. Oh, deep cover, Mike. Out there trying to, trying to save the world one, one poop eater at a time. Doing his best. Oh, do we have to... Oh, should we talk about... Super serious things. You know what? Actually, somebody super chatted something. Rather large donation, too, from JS. And I saw the person he was donating about, so I'm just going to read it now. Uh, so the person that it's about can respond, because they're in the chat, too. Uh, so JS asked this earlier. I don't know the answer to it. I uh, got stuck at the Tampa VA hospital because of the hurricane. Flying back home to Arizona today during your stream. Can you ask Evil Bunny if he's the same Evil Bunny from Tim's uh, Harmful Opinion streams? Shout out to the Archive channel. Thanks for the streams. Hope you feel better, Jim. And I did see Evil Bunny in here earlier. I say like 10 minutes ago. I, I swear he's in here. Evil Bunny, 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 Sig Money is promised. So uh, there you go, Evil Bunny. Uh, I don't know if you're the same dude or not, but uh, somebody was asking earlier uh, if you are or not. This is during, this is during like the buildup to the stream because the stream was up for maybe like two or three hours before going live. <laughs> during which time uh, Ethan Ralph had a I don't know what you'd call it a meltdown a freak out you could probably call it a lot of things a, a conversation with my chat <laughs> I don't know what they're I don't know what they're streaming over at fucking cozy but he was streaming my chat on a live stream that wasn't live for another two hours for hours for hours long uh, so I had a, a little basic conversation with him uh, as I, I typed and he responded. You know, like calling uh, a call and a uh, 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 recall, call and holler with a pig. And so uh, how do I break it down? We talked about Beardson's hot goth gas station girlfriend that doesn't exist. I didn't get to ask him about uh, Dalton and his uh, Michael Jackson dancing videos. I don't know if you guys know this. But there are, there are many talented people on Cozy TV. And one of them is Dalton Clodfelter, who is uh, quite the connoisseur of the arts. And uh, his mommy, his mommy for many years made him put on a sequence glove and do Michael Jackson dances uh, at her behest. Probably rip roar and drunk off wine. Just fucking 40 sheets to the wind. Dalton! It's to mommy. Mommy needs some more Michael Jackson. Dance for mommy, Dalton. This is why daddy's not here anymore. Because you don't listen. But Dalton has like, I don't know, maybe 400 dancing Dalton videos. <laughs> it's a Freemason. Dalton is a Freemason that does Michael Jackson dancing videos. What the fuck is Cozy TV again? Can somebody explain to me what the fuck Cozy TV? What is America first? 
I've been puzzled by this for a, like a year now. I Maybe Nick Fuentes could write a manifesto and explain to me what the fuck you guys are. You've got Baked Alaska that's a federal informant. And we'll look at some of that stuff. You've got Beardson Beardley, who desperately wants to be a black dude who's 18 years old, and yet he's stuck as a, a 30-year-old white guy making up imaginary goth gas station girlfriends. Dalton Coltfetter is a fucking Michael Jackson moonwalking Freemason. <laughs> you got Kai, who I think's on like a Mormon mission now. You got Ethan Ralph that eats poop on tape. All right. And then you got you got you got Nick Fuentes, who takes like a thousand fucking creep shots of dudes that are asleep. I I don't fucking know what this group is. It's not a political organization. And Cozy TV can't be called a streaming platform. Nobody watches them. So <laughs> what what is it? Chad, can you explain it to me? I don't fucking... How do you get dancing Freemasons and federal informants? It's the weirdest mixture of shit I've ever seen put together. If this was like a, a, a cookbook, if this was like a recipe in a cookbook, it would make you sick. You would get food poisoning from it. These ingredients don't... They don't mesh well. They don't go well together. Anybody in chat want to take a guess as to what we're dealing with here? It's a fetish site, chat. <laughs> I mean, that's fucking possible. Uh, Ram Ranch is also a very good fucking guess of the aristocrats. Doxing Honeypot, uh, I see that too. Oh, you gotta love the doxing fucking honeypot. I like that. Not a cookbook, uh, it's a cuckbook. That's, uh, that's, that's good. That works for me. Glowtube, that also works. I think that's good. I too, but <laughs> IP2, but gayer and dumber. That's a hard order, but maybe. Group therapy, I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just, I'm fucking baffled by it. I don't know. I don't get it. You know, I tried asking Ralph when he was seething at me earlier as he stared at a blank screen because there's no stream going on, uh, what the fuck they are. You know, as I'm asking like a question, like, can you, can you explain it to me, Ralph? Like what, 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 what the deal is? Like Nick Fuentes tells people that it's like an incel movement. And yet it's made up of a bunch of 30 and 40 year olds that are divorced or married. I don't, that seems like, is that like, is that a scam? Are we talking like grifting? Is that what that is? I know that word grifting gets thrown out there a lot, by the way, you know, uh, the irony <clears throat> not lost on me by my hats. Okay. Uh, but <laughs> to sell yourself as an insult movement when everybody's a 30 or 40 year old dad that's divorced or married seems a little fucked up to me. Especially when you find out half of them are like dancing Daltons. Like it's a dancing, he dances to Michael Jackson. What the fuck is going on over there? Does do Bakes handlers like ask him to do that? Could you moonwalk for us in this lineup, Dalton? <laughs> can we make sure you're not one of them? We've been going through Bakes' phone. Can you moonwalk so we can compare the footage to, to some of the suspects that we have from January 6th? Because Bake has flipped on everybody. Could you do that for us, Dalton? Can we get a Shimon? We have audio clips, Dalton of suspects at January 6th. We need you to Shimon for us to see if we can match that frequency to them. That's what we're looking to do. <laughs> the Fed boys. Pe people want to see Dancing Daltons. Should I do it? Okay, chat. Let me see if I can find you a Dancing Dalton. <laughs> oh my God. Hold on. I will find you one. I will find you a dancing Dalton chat because I. <laughs> There's a lot of dancing Daltons to go through. So hold on. Okay, let's let's find a good dancing Dalton here. There are like 84 fucking channels of dancing Daltons. So, there we go. Okay, all right, here we go. I got a dancing Dalton. Chat, um, I, I do want to, I, well, I guess I should ask, um, does chat <laughs> want to see a dancing Dalton? I'll ask you. Maybe chat's not interested in the Shimones. I don't know. I found some. I'll give you a chance to answer chat. We'll see if we're going to watch some dancing Daltons. I can pull some up.
It's not that difficult. There's so goddamn many of them. I'll give it... Oh, wow, that's a quick fucking result. Woo! Okay, uh, well, I was going to say, I'll give it like a minute. Maybe chat's not interested. A thousand votes, 94% immediately. They want Dancing Daltons. <laughs> okay, let's do it. All right, fuck the pie. Uh, that's the answer. All right. I believe this is when Dalton... I don't know how old he is right now, but... This is, uh, again, a premier cozy streamer being forced to dance uh, <laughs> to dance like Michael Jackson for mommy. Uh, let's, let's pull it up. Here's, here's our dancing Dalton, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to Cozy TV. Oh, it's a dancing Dalton. Oh, that's a liquor bottle. That clink you heard, that's mommy dropping the liquor bottle. She's so happy dancing, Dale <laughs> Dalton's dancing for her. She's just fine with it. I like how the music's barely audible, so it's even more uncomfortable. And he's got a glitter glove on. By the way, this is like mid-2000s. So this isn't like some, you know, cute shit from the 80s. He's doing this in the 2000s. <laughs> Maybe this is how you get your 33-degree uh, angle in uh, Freemasonry, is you've got to perform, uh, like, a dance for them. I, but he's very into it. That's... <laughs> That's your dancing Dalton chat. Oh. Oh, there are so many of them out there, too. There are so many dancing Dalton videos out there. Yes, well, yes, I turned. Oh, <laughs> no. oh you can't hear it. Oh, fuck, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, chat. You couldn't hear it. Yep, I had the, I had the audio down. Doesn't matter. You wouldn't have been able to hear it anyway. <sighs> Makes that joke about the liquor bottle hit a little less. Because <laughs> you could really hear a clink. There was actually a clink in the background. You know, this is just a joke that his mom was like 40 sheets of the wind, making him dance around the living room like that. But there's a bottle drop. There is. You can kind of see a little bit of like a nervous reflection in his body language. Like, oh shit, mommy, not again. Please, mommy, don't hit Dancing Dalton. He'll dance for you. He'll moonwalk for you, mommy. Oh, you fuck! You fucked it up. We need to hear the shim out. You really could not hear the audio chat. I'm gonna be honest with you. It's it's barely audible in the background. Just <laughs> barely audible. I probably saved myself a copyright strike anyway, because I don't know. It says smooth dancer like it's smooth criminal, but that's not the song they're playing. They're playing something else. So I I don't even. Sh let me see if I can find you another dancing Dalton. Let me make it up for you. And I'll find a like a later version of a dancing Dalton. And I love the descriptions on the videos. All the video descriptions are, I'm so proud of my baby boy. My baby boy and his Bravo dancing. Oh, he's a stage kid. Oh, God. Oh, he's a stage kid and they're stage dancing. I don't know if I have the stomach for this. Do you want to watch... <laughs> it's called Dalton rocking around the Christmas tree. Do you want to watch Dalton chat chat? Do you want to watch Dalton rocking around the Christmas tree? Is that what we're going to watch? Are we going to watch Dalton dancing around the Christmas tree? It's a dancing Dalton play it. Well, okay, chat. <laughs> if you fucking insist, I will. Okay, hold on. Let me make sure the fucking audio works this time. Of course, the, it's filmed at the wrong angle, of course. <laughs> this is like some version of hell, isn't it? He's the one with the candy cane being very effeminate. I think he's the one in the red shirt on the bottom. That's our dancing Dalton right there. You know, I think I'm starting to understand why Nick Fuentes picked this kid. <laughs> I think I, I'm starting to understand why Nick Fuentes was interested in dancing Daltons. Just sashaying up on stage with that fucking... He's got a candy cane. He's got a fucking candy cane. And a sequence glove. And he's moonwalking around the stage. You know, Nick, I think I'm onto you, buddy. I think... I, I think you... I think you, fig, you found out about Gladfelter. Because you, you stumbled across these dancing Dalton videos with the candy canes, didn't you? Oh, he's got jazz hands, all right. That's what Nick was looking for. Oh, put those jazz hands on me, Dalton. Oh, God, Dalton. Sashay for me. 
Dance for me, Dalton. Dance for me like you danced for mommy. <laughs> uh, somebody in chat saying, Jim, who is this? Uh, well, again, this is a uh, another uh, integral member of America First, Nick Fuentes' uh, political organization of Catboys, and also a premier streamer on Cozy TV. Uh, he wants to be a shock jock now and do uh, like shock jock radio on Cozy, which is really just him wearing a shitty, like busted 90s leather jacket and shitty sunglasses. But now that I know he's a dancing Dalton and he sashays around stages with a fucking candy cane, it's hard to take him seriously as like a shock jock. It's hard to see somebody talking shit and uh, <laughs> saying all kinds of shit when he's literally sashaying around with a fucking candy cane. Dance for me, Dalton. Oh, uh, yes, Chad. It is his personal cult. <laughs> That's another way of putting it. Sure. Is Nick fapping to this? I don't know. We should get to. Oh, do I have the pictures? Hold on. Oh, my God. I hope I have the pictures. Oh, my, I've got one picture of it. You know, I might as well talk about it now. Uh, let me put it in here. Sure, let's do it like that. So, um, <laughs> uh, Jaden McNeil used to be on, uh, you know, uh, Cozy TV. He used to be part of American First, and he left. I think everybody's kind of familiar with that. There's a big breakup between Nick and Jaden. But it turns out uh, Nick Fuentes has a really weird habit of taking creep shots of dudes that fall asleep around him. Now, this is one of them, but I swear to you, chat, I've seen about 25 pictures of Jaden McNeil asleep. Every time he would fall, this was a guy that lived in Nick's house in his basement. Every time he would fall asleep, Nick Fuentes would be taking pictures of him when he's completely oblivious to it. It's not like, it's not like bros fucking around, you know? Where your friend gets too drunk and you draw a dick on his head. Or or your friend falls asleep in like a weird position. You take a picture to embarrass the shit out of him. It's like photo after photo after photo of his balls and his feet. And Nick like doing selfie poses like this. And I half the time he's got like liquor bottles around him. So it makes me think like Nick was waiting for him to pass out drunk. To get some fucking, you know, like some pictures of him. Now I know Ethan, uh, you know, Ralph is going to a midlife crisis slumber party at Ollie Jamal's house. And my fear is, if Nick Fuentes is around that many men who are drinking and asleep, there are going to be a lot of fucking creep shots taken. It's very weird, chat. It's very weird. Apparently, according to Jaden, he was completely unaware that Nick Fuentes was taking nonstop creep shots of him. Completely unaware that Nick Fuentes was out there just snapping photos of him as he's just completely fucking asleep, three sheets to the wind, completely oblivious to, to the shit that's going on. How is this man? This guy is gay. Can we just fucking... Nick, can you just tell people that? It's been like... It's since February when I, I basically... You know, when we had our little stream together... Or when was it? Uh, April, May. It's been like six months. Fuck it. It's been like half a year. Just admit you're gay. This is not what a straight dude does, Nick. You're taking pictures of Jaden McNeil asleep for fat material. That's what that is. It's some weird ass fat material. This is you're getting your nuts off to this. This is your your jolly seeking behavior, Nick. Dudes don't do this with other dudes. This isn't normal. All right. The reason I, this is like a creep shot thing. This is like a dude trying to get a picture of something he thinks is hot when uh, you know when he thinks he can get away with it. And in your case, that thing is Jaden McNeil, who's completely helpless and asleep. <laughs> and you did it like a hundred times. And then you posted it online like it was an own, which is really fucking weird. Like, how does how does that own Jaden, by the way, Nick? When you're taking, like, pictures of a dude that's completely asleep or passed out, how are you owning him? It just makes you look like a fucking creep. It makes you look unhinged. It's unhinged behavior. Like, oh, look at this. Look at this motherfucker. He goes to sleep. <laughs> I've got proof. 184 photos saved on my phone. There's nothing gay about that. There's, there's nothing weird about that. <sighs> Nick's been having a little bit of a tough time lately. A little bit of a hard time. It's understandable. 
I don't know if chat's uh, sympathetic or not, but uh, it's not just Jaden that's broken his heart. Nick's been fucked up about that for like half a year. But Destiny did too. Now, uh, Nick Fuentes was trying to like do an outreach thing and meet bread tubers and other Twitch personalities. He was going out there meeting Sneeko and Destiny and all these people. You know, he showed up at Destiny's house and had a really weird, you know, interaction with him. <laughs> where there's this, I wish I could find the clip. There's this one moment where Nick is streaming with Destiny in person at his house. And like, Destiny's fucking around on his computer and Nick like stares at him. And then he says, do you want me to go? <laughs> it's the most socially awkward autistic shit I've ever seen. Like he can't pick up on social cues and thought because Destiny wasn't giving him nonstop attention, that meant that Destiny wanted him out of his house immediately. So, you know, Nick's setting up this like new premier relationship with Destiny. He's going to go do Twitch stuff. He's going to reach out, branch out, network, socialize. He found a new boy toy. Maybe Destiny will let him take pictures of him asleep. You know, I don't know. Uh, but then it all went to shit. Heartbreak City. Oh, it's tough. First Jaden dumps you and then, and then Destiny. And Nick is just all fucked up over it. Spent all that time buttering him up. Flew out to visit him. Flew out, spent money to fly out to visit him. And Destiny shattered his heart. I need to get like that Chris Chan um, shattered heart meter that he used to include in his comics. So I could put that on pictures of Nick and Destiny. Because his like heart breaks, his heart is like a 10% full right now. It has been shitter shattered 90 fucking percent. <laughs> And Destiny, from what I understand, is into open relationships. So, like, there was an opportunity there, Nick, and you fucked it up. You could have been, you could have been tapping that. All right, he would have been awake for you. That would have been an extra special treat, huh? For once, the guy's awake, Nick. But um, heartbreak city, tragic, fucking tragic. Destiny, no, yes, that's right. <laughs> Conservative pussy. I don't know how that works, Chad. In a gay relationship between two men of different political positions, which one's the top and which one's the bottom? Would it be the liberal or would it be the conservative? This would have answered so many questions for the internet. But Nick fucked it all up because he let his attack dogs go after people that Destiny associates with. It's like any time Nick Fuentes shows up and starts talking to somebody, all their shit gets flagged down. Uh, I wonder why. He tried to maybe force him onto Cozy. Who fucking knows? But Destiny threw his hands up. <laughs> somebody chat Nick would be the bottom uh, well they're both very short okay so it's not like a height or stature thing I I don't know you know I guess you're right I don't think I think I'm going to be honest chat I think Destiny would have dominated him <laughs> I think Destiny would have rode him uh, rode him with no mercy fistful of hair and everything Oh, Nick, it would have been the time of your life. What did you do? You ruined it. And now all you have left are creep shots of Jaden on your phone. <laughs> oh. Sad. Extremely sussy. Very sussy. It's very. You want me to do a poll? <sighs> what would the poll question be on this? Uh, I guess who would dominate? <laughs> okay, chat. I mean, that's fine. We can we can do a poll. All right, there's your poll, chat. Who would dominate? Would it be Nick or Destiny? Again, personally, looking at it, I'm throwing my money out there. I'm saying Destiny. If I had to put money on it, if I had to really, like, you press me on this, it, it's Destiny. But I'll give you a minute. I'll let you I'll let you feel it out a little bit. Think about it. Somebody saying Destiny is a power bottom. I don't know. I don't watch enough of Destiny to really know like what <laughs> I guess what he's like. I know he like plays Factorio religiously as he talks about politics for eight hours. But I guess maybe that grit and determination would make him the dominant one. I, I don't know. And Destiny's not the one that flew out to meet Nick. Nick flew out to meet Destiny. So I, I, I think, yeah, I really do think it would be Destiny. Maybe I'd have to ask somebody that knows them better and see them interact, like Destiny's wife. Like, who do you think? Who do you think's on top in the situation? 
She might have a better judgment of that. Uh, somebody saying, wait, is Destiny gay for real? No, uh, from what I understand, he's bi. Or open. I don't know. I'm not, that's not even a joke. That's just what I've heard. I think that's true. So I think, like, Nick saw this as, like, a an inroad. Like, oh, here's a, fr like, here's a friendly, safe liberal that's open sexually that won't, like, feel embarrassed to watch. What's that? Um, the, the trans show that Nick watches, Euphoria or something? He'll watch Euphoria with me. He'll let me take pictures of him when he's awake. You know, it's, this is like a dream come true. Uh, people saying he's gay. I don't know. If you're in the audience and you know Destiny better than I, well, he can't be gay. He's married. He would have to be bi. Unless his wife has got like the <laughs> like a special secret. Is that what you're saying? I don't know. Is it Euphoria? I'm pretty sure it's Euphoria. Yes, it's Euphoria. Thank you, chat. Chat's got my back. All right, let me. I've got a few uh, a big uh, donations. Let me actually read these. Uh, loser in a suit for 100. Uh, the future is bright. Nuclear fusion bright. We've got one from Frostback. Thanks for the years of laughs. Uh, at Speds, Feds, and people off their meds, have some smokes on me, Jimbo. Uh, well, thank you. Thank you. I will have some smokes on you. <laughs> As we solve the mystery of who's the top, Destiny or Nick? I don't know. I should have put like some, um, is it Wheel of Fortune music? Some kind of game show music to make that to, to, to make that like a bigger question. There's really no competition. Listen, 3,700 of you have voted. 85% say Destiny would be absolutely dominating the shit out of this. Nick would be, AF would stand for ass first. That would be the position Nick would be in as Destiny utterly dominates him. <laughs> okay, let's end the poll. Let's end that poll. Get this picture off screen. It is weird, though. Uh, in all seriousness, uh, again, I think Ralph is stream sniping this. Uh, probably with Bibble putting people to sleep. So uh, muzzle him for a minute, Ralph, so your audience wakes up. And be sure to tell Nick this is creepy as fuck and it's weird. And there's no explanation he has on Earth that doesn't make it weird as creepy and fuck. You know, like, there's nothing he can say that's going to make people be like, oh, yeah, that's normal. It's not. I'm telling you, motherfucker, when you go to your little girl's slumber party, your midlife crisis slumber party at Ali Jamal's house, sleep with one eye open. Otherwise, like a year from now, Ralph, they're going to be creep shots of you with your legs spread apart. And Nick just, just down in there taking selfies left and right. And you don't want that. You don't want that. It's clearly fucked Jaden up. It's clearly fucked his head up. You don't want that, okay? It's not something, it's not something you're interested in. No. Oh, speaking of sad news, because we're moving off the breakup of Destiny and Nick here. Can I, can I get a, a P for piss on the grave? Stadia's gone? Oh, God. Oh, not my Stadia. Not the future of video games. Not not the platform where I have to pay a monthly fee and buy a digital copy of a game, neither of which, you know, uh, give me ownership of shit. Where I'm really just renting a controller to get fucked out of money every month. Oh, no, not Stadia. Please, God, no. Not my glorious fucking Stadia. Can somebody explain to me what Google thought th they were fucking doing with this? You know, when I first heard the announcement for Stadia, and they were like, oh, we're going to come out with this digital platform, it's going to be like the Netflix of gaming, everybody keeps saying that. Oh, we're going to create the Netflix of gaming. It's not. <laughs> if this was a Netflix of gaming, it'd be like uh, Xbox Game Pass, where you pay, what, 10 bucks a month and you can play whatever the fuck you want? Instead with this, if you wanted to play the games, you had to pay the subscription and then buy the game to have a copy of it, which you didn't own. And now Google is shutting down the fucking entire platform. Once again, it's another it's another Google fucking product that you put money into and you invest in. And it exists for a year to a year and a half, maybe two years. And then it's fucking dead and it's gone and it's buried. You know, I really love the modern current trend in gaming of getting fucked in my ass. I've really truly enjoyed the last... Gener this generation in particular, I know City is kind of outside of it. It's like tiptoeing in both. But I, I do truly enjoy, 
you know, not having access to newer consoles because they're getting, you know, taken up by scalpers that oversell them. And then having companies uh, keep fucking with the manufacturing to make it uh, cheaper and cheaper production wise, but keep upping the cost to fuck me out of more money. Or having regionally different prices because, you know, clearly Europeans and Americans are different kinds of human beings. <laughs> And Europeans and Australians and Asians, uh, they all deserve to get fucked out of their money. I'm looking at you, Sony. I'm looking at you. I love that there are no exclusives anymore. Because, you know, everybody buys a console for multi-platform titles. I love that they're just all going on PC. Well, it is great that they're going on PC, because now I can play them on Steam Deck. I love that everything's digital. Because who wants a physical copy of anything anymore? I can't believe Microsoft won. Do you remember when the Xbox One first came out and they got fucking hammered for saying the shit they did? And now everything they said back then is now happening and everybody is so happy about it? You're not going to own physical copies. You're going to rent physical copies. Um, everything's going to be multi-platform. You have to log in to get access. No used game sales shit for you anymore, motherfucker. Like all the stuff, you're going to need a, a connection to do anything. All that shit that they said. And when they got snarky with people, I remember that interview with Jeff Keighley where the uh, the Xbox guy was like, oh, we have a product offline. That's called the Xbox 360. Go fuck yourself, poor people. I love that everything he said is now the fucking reality in gaming. I love that, that video games this generation is just a miserable slog through fucking disappointment after disappointment. I think I got one good game. I don't like the last, like Elden Rings. I really liked Elden Rings and a few indie titles like Proteus and shit like that. But the problem with those fucking indie titles, man, is they go into early access and they're in early access for two or three fucking years. So you play 30 or 40% of the game and then two or three years later, you've got to ask yourself, do I want to play this again? I've already pretty much played half of it. Like it's been two fucking years. Do I want to replay that four hours I've already played? just to play four more hours that I might not really like. That's like, that's the trade off with the indie shit. Great, great fucking generation. It, it's a, where is it? It's a sad Clem. Clem will remember that. It's a sad day for video games. This generation fucking sucks. Everything about it fucking sucks. I feel bad for you. If you're a, if you're a Sony sister, if you're, if you're somebody that legitimately loves PlayStation, are you getting fucked in the ass right now or what? <laughs> you're absolutely, you're getting banged like Destiny would be banging Nick Fuentes. That is what's happening to you right now. You're paying more money for a console that has no exclusives and no titles. It's all multi-platform. And now they're going to release the PSVR 2, which like, I'm going to guess is going to be also in limited quantity for another five or six. You're going to pay $1,200 for the full PlayStation 5 experience of playing PS5 games and PSVR games. And what games are you going to have access to? Like, two titles. <laughs> Fucking two titles. Returnal and Demon Souls. I think those are your exclusives. Not God of War, that's going everywhere. Uh, you know, fuck me, I think Returnal's going everywhere as well. In fact, I'm almost certain everything's going everywhere because PlayStation can't make enough PS5s to get them out even though they always say how great their sales are. So you buy the console, the discless one nobody wants. You get your digital games for your $1,200 setup to play one title you could have played on PC for $20 when it got put on sale two days later. A sad fucking state of video games. It's depressing, chat. <laughs> Yeah, no. Uh, somebody in chat is Returnal going? Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm absolutely certain. I've seen an article saying Returnal is actually going to go on PC. I wouldn't fucking doubt it. Oh, if Bloodborne comes out, oh, the the shitstorm that's going to cause. They do a remaster of Bloodborne and they put that on PC too. I don't know what you're going to do. Burn your PlayStation, throw it out a fucking window. <laughs> Just give up and get a PC. Oh, I've seen people say Switch Master Race. I, you know, Nintendo Switch might be the only one that actually has fucking exclusives. 
I mean, their first part, their first party games don't go multi-platform. Everybody else does. You could give Xbox a bit of a pass on this because that's their entire business strategy. You know, and Xbox is mine. The Game Pass shit, that's the moneymaker. I, I don't I don't think they're going to be in the console game very much longer. I don't think they give a shit. They'll just they'll make the Netflix of gaming. That's what they're setting themselves up to be. Buy all the big studios, make all the big games, and then fucking put them out on a subscription service, and they don't give a shit. Cut down on overhead of fucking console making. I don't know what, what is PlayStation going to do. You're going to get, what, Destiny 3? Oh, boy. Oh, boy, I could play Destiny 3 on my PSVR 2 that cost me $850 uh, that I had to spend an extra $400 to import because it's from Australia, where they upcharged me another $800. Or I could play it on the, the PC for uh, $20, but that doesn't matter. I am. I am caught up on the exclusives because what is the other what what appeal exactly is there for the hardware if there's not exclusives for it? If you don't have a good library to go with it, what's the point of getting the console? I mean, it has to have something unique to offer. If it's just multi-platform, anybody can do that. If there's not a specific exclusive, you're fucked. There's there's nothing for you. Last of Us Part Three? I don't think so, friend. Uh, well, we've got pirates in chat. I understand. Yes, I, I understand. The concept of paying by itself would make you laugh. Yes, at this point. Switch is a true goat. Maybe. Oh, yes. I, I did play the Telltale games. I played... I did play this. And I played... Uh, what's the other one? Wolf Among Us? I think that's the name of it. I thought it was good. I liked the Wolf Among Us. I thought they were going to do like a season two of that. I don't even know if they're doing that anymore. Does that company even exist anymore? Is it fucking dead? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> it's probably fucking dead. Dead and buried and gone. A Medicare box? Yeah, there we go. Powered by, powered by, da that would be my exclusive. It's a Dancing Dalton Freemasonry game. That's what I would go for. <laughs> Can you become a 80th degree parallel in the, the Freemasonry by learning? It'd be like Dance Dance Revolution, Just Dance, and Freemasonry all combined uh, with motion controls, because everybody loves motion controls, and uh, VR functionality that doesn't do anything. That would be the, the Medicare box. That's what I would add to it. <laughs> fucking terrible. Uh, speaking of fucking terrible, let me go get, I'm going to, we'll do a short, small break. I'm going to get a drink and then, uh, <laughs> then we'll talk about the super happy, positive, fun time, good vibes coming up, future of the world. Uh, going on with uh, Putin in Ukraine. Why do we do that? Because we're going to have to talk about it for a few minutes. Because it's unavoidable. It's unavoidable. For all I know, there are nukes flying right now during the stream, and the EMP has knocked out the entire audience, and I'm just talking to myself. I don't fucking know. So let's do a quick five-minute break. Grab yourself a drink. <laughs> we'll come back with the positively riveting and uplifting story of World War III. Who doesn't love that? Yeah. 
Okay. <laughs> oh, I love that song. I, I still can't believe somebody made that. <laughs> I can't believe somebody in Australia made that as like a PSA video, but then they put all, uh, they, <laughs> all the kids are indigenous talking about don't drink gasoline. It's so fucking insulting. That's, it cheers me up every time. Rama Rama is such a great song, but I think it was like a catastrophic miscalculation on their part. They've made a terrible, a terrible decision. All right, let's talk about this shit. Oh my God. World War Three. Oh fuck. Hands in the air. A little terrified. <laughs> a little terrified. Vlad's out there doing some shit. How can I explain this political situation with my cunning fucking political insight? Chat. Oh, look, it's a, it's a map somebody else made because I'm fucking too lazy to do this. So, like, there are these oblasts that are, like, states. And Putin decided, I want those. Like, I like Crimea. So, I'm, I, I'm going to take four more of them. And they all have names I can't pronounce, and I'm not going to try to, because I don't give a shit. So really, this map is just kind of like a, it's a little a little red tail. You can kind of see like there's like that tail on a dog. It's the ass of a, an ass of a cow, or a buffalo. Actually, Ukraine looks like a fucking buffalo. So really, Putin's taking over the ass of the buffalo, I guess is the best way to think of it. But it's taken like 250 fucking days, I don't know. <laughs> so that's that's the map. I hope you memorize. It's very important so we can all understand the intricacies of this geopolitical situation because that's what you want from a YouTuber that talks about people who eat shit is to hear their deep fucking insights on geopolitics and nuclear warfare. Uh, so what's going to happen? What is our boy, Mr. Putin, going to do? Well, he gave a speech today. Uh, it was a doozy of a speech. Talked about how U.S. using nuclear weapons during World War II set a precedent for their use in uh, in warfare. Talked about how these four oblasts, these territories, were now his and he'd defend them with any means necessary, meaning nuclear weapons. Talked about uh, how he doesn't like Ukraine very much. I don't know if he's, maybe you don't know that. Not a big fan. A little angry at Zelensky and everybody over there. Talked about, I swear to God he said this. I don't, you know, you could you could argue with me about the intricacies of a translations, but he basically, if you summed up his speech, I'm not fucking kidding. I'm being dead serious. He said, "I'm annexing Ukraine because there are just too many fucking trannies in the West." <laughs> this that's the gist of what he said. The gist of what he said when he gave his speech. I've got to annex Ukraine. There are just too goddamn many trannies. In the Western Hemisphere, I can't take it anymore. We've got to take over this country. <laughs> oh, like I get the feeling, you know how people would always say like, oh, the U.S. government officials will like secretly post on uh, the poll board on 4chan, you know, uh, like Fed posting. Oh, that's the FBI agent. That's the CIA agent. I think Putin browses 4chan. And I swear to God, I think they've I think they've gotten into his fucking head. And I think a lot of Pol's memes are now like floating around in there. And I wouldn't be surprised if Putin gives a speech like a week or two weeks or a month from now where he talks about how, uh, you know, Russian troops don't need night vision because their enemies glow in the dark. It's like a wink or a nod. You get me? Like that's, I feel like shitposting and memory have somehow breached the barrier once again into reality and is now heading us on a course to total apocalyptic nuclear hellfire. <laughs> there's no way to, there's no way to escape it. If I have to like, what is that history book going to look like? It doesn't, who, it doesn't matter who wins. What is that fucking history book going to look like? You know, when they're sitting there and they're talking about the world wars, Oh, Archduke Franz Ferdinand and uh, economic, uh, economic issues, the treaty of Versailles, uh, teacher, what about World War Three? What do you mean? Well, I mean, there's all this information on World War One and World War Two, but World War Three, there's not a lot here. What? Why do we go to what? What was the what was the reason we fought World War Three? Oh, uh, turn to Chapter Four uh, on page one. What, teacher? It just says trannies. I don't. <laughs> what does that mean? What? What is, why, what is that, teacher? I don't understand. What? What is? What is that? Why did we? How is that? A, what? 
That's why we went to war, Timmy. That's what started the nuclear apocalypse. There were just too many men wearing dresses. <laughs> Vladimir Putin had enough. He said, no more. I need to stop this tragedy from transpiring. I'm taking over fucking Ukraine. He said, I've had enough. It's game over. This is fucking Putin talking, motherfucker. This is, this is like a translation of his speech, because that's how he talks. This is Putin talking, motherfucker. <laughs> I am sick of men in dresses. I'm taking over Ukraine. <laughs> All these oblasts are mine now. You thought you put that makeup and those high heels on? I'm taking another one. You put that lipstick on, motherfucker? I'm taking Kiev. That's how Putin rolls. This is this is the fucking reality we've wandered into. This, <laughs> this is sometimes I wonder, like, did the cancer already kill me? Am I in some weird kind of afterlife where shit posting? It's like I, I don't know. It's like uh, how things are. This is my own version of, like Paradise Lost kind of shit, or um, uh, uh, I, I don't I don't know. Is this like purgatory? A shit posting purgatory? I'm pretty sure that you know, like using the justification of trannies to start a war. It's hard for me to wrap my head around. You know, like I'm thinking back to like Yuri Bezimov. I'm pretty sure he didn't. Uh, oh, burp there a little bit. That one's for you, Ralph. Uh, I didn't. I, you know, I don't think that's really what he was getting at. But that's 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 why you're gonna die, chat. I know you come to me for the deep cuts, for that political insight that you can't get anywhere else. Really deep YouTube thoughts, big thinking thoughts. There you go. You're gonna die in a nuclear hellfire because too many dudes are wearing dresses. That's that's. I want you to tell people that when you hear the sirens going off and your neighbors are screaming in the streets and they're running around, I literally want you to grab them and tell them that. I want that to be the last thought in their head. Just because it's funny. I don't know. Like, even if it's not true, it's funny. And how confusing would that be? How the emergency broadcast system comes on. People are screaming. Washington, D.C. has been nuked. Moscow has been nuked. Bombs are in the air. Everything is going to shit. Your neighbor is running down the street with, like, a handful of silver and a shotgun trying to find a hole to hide in. And you literally grab them by the shoulder and you say, hey. Just so you know, it's trannies. I want that to be the last thought in his head as his bones turn to dust. <laughs> it's, a, it's just sheer fucking confusion on his face at that situation. Oh, take, take off the dress if you want to live. Yes, there you go. I think I summed it up. What do you think, chat? Have I allayed your fears? Have I explained the geopolitics of this big thinking thought shit? I know CNN, MSNBC, Fox News, NPR, all of them have hours and hours of conversation about it. I know there are alternative websites and normal websites that have hours and hours of conversations about it. But Vladimir Putin himself told you straight up. It basically Keffels. Okay, if you want to know, this is because of Keffels. World War III has started because of Keffels. Vladimir Putin had enough of that ratioing shit on Twitter, and he's like, fuck it, where's the red button? That's where we are. Apparently Putin had a Kiwi Farms account. He's very fucking mad about this. And now we get nuclear apocalypse. That's, that's what it is. This is Keffels' fault. We're all going to die in nuclear hellfire because of Keffels. Oh, fucking God. I love Clown World. Now, let me get this. Let me get that. Yeah, let's do a palate cleanser. Oh, this is my go-to palate cleanser. By the way, I have, I have Acer Thorn news for today. But let's do a small palate cleanser, because I don't want you shook from the thought of uh, uh, the, the, the nuclear apocalypse, right? Let's get that out of our system. We had the big scary talk for five minutes with that in-depth political conversation. Let's uh, let's let's flush that out of the system with a half-naked crazy man gobbling like a turkey, and then we can we could talk a little bit of Acer Thorn here. For interventions, they could prove powerful in years to come. While the Senate and other political institutions in the
I just let the insanity flow into you. All right, this is how we cope. All right, it may be the end of the world. Tomorrow, uh, the apocalypse may come. NATO and uh, Russia and China, oh my. It's all very scary. But just center yourself on the thought of an obese, half-naked man wandering around uh, uh, what obviously is a, a hooker-killing hotspot. I, I said before, he's buried them in the walls, gobbling like a turkey. Ah, there we go. Feels better, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, I love crazy people. God, it just ah, it makes you relax. Watching somebody do something just utterly insane for... You can't really puzzle out what the fuck is going on or why they're doing it. It's just pure, unbridled fucking insanity. Ah, it's just nice and just relaxes you. You watch it and you just your just brain turns off for a minute. You're like, yeah. Yeah, I could do this. So Acer Thorn. I have an Acer Thorn presentation. I, I was, you know, I was kind of torn on it. Do I want to show the entire turkey stream, which is an hour and a half? It's known as the um, the accidental live stream. Now, I've explained a little bit about the basics of Aether, or Acer Thorn. He sued many people. He's filed many DCM claims or DMCA claims. He brought them all to court and he lost horribly. But that's not the entire story of Acer Thorn. He sued like 40 different institutions and individuals, stabbed his father in the face and then sued him for bleeding. I'm not making that up. This motherfucker stabbed somebody and then sued them for getting stabbed, which is insane. And I think the total price tag was like $5 billion. He sued him for like $5 billion for bleeding on him. Like, how dare you bleed on me, Dad, when I stab you in your face? So uh, he sued, he sued uh, universities. He sued uh, government officials. He sued so many YouTubers, it would make your head spin. And there are court records for all of them. Plus the exit on a live stream. Plus two other live streams where he freaked out. I've compiled this, and it keeps getting pushed back. And I want to do an in-depth Acer, or Acer Thorn stream. And while I was compiling this, and I don't know what it is about fat dudes and DMCAs, but right now as we speak, there's an, another insane fat man on YouTube that's doing the exact same thing. And he's almost as psychotic as Acer Thorn. I don't know if it was like a genetics experiment. If somebody's out there like growing these motherfuckers in vats or something. But there was more than one. Now there's a second one doing the same shit, and he looks like he lives in a fucking hooker-killing den, too. So, recently, um, and I'll get into the Kiwi Farms stuff in a second, uh, but recently I did a stream with Josh from Kiwi Farms over on Odyssey. Uh, it's a little rough, Odyssey, on, on streaming, uh, but they're more lax than they are over here on YouTube. Now, I would stream on, you know, like I've, I've tried different streaming sites like StreamMe, uh, DLive, you know, all these different places. But Odyssey seems, uh, from the, you know, surface, like it's okay. So I've decided to do a, I, I don't know what you'd call it, though. Because it's not strictly Acer Thorn, and I don't want to give away who the other fat idiot is. It's not, it's not Ethan Ralph. I know if I say fat guy DM saying people, <laughs> you probably think Rage Pig. But it really is a totally different dude. So it's two fat guys sue everyone stream. Uh, that I'm going to do over on Odyssey. So I'm going to make the account, and it's going to be over on Odyssey, and it will be on the 8th of October. 
so not uh, not this Saturday, uh, but next Saturday. And you know, unlike YouTube, I can leave the streams up, and I'm going to start it probably at like noon, and it's probably going to run about five hours, because we've got to watch the entire stream, go over all the court documents, which are insane, all the supplementary streams talking about how insane Acerthorn is and how the YouTubers won their court cases. And then our second star of the show, who is also fat, insane, and suing everybody for no conceivable fucking reason. Because uh, people are laughing at his dumb fucking videos on the internet, too. Now, if that works out, I can do, like, I can do, like, highlight streams on Odyssey and say the stuff that I want to say over there that I can't particularly say over here. And watch the stuff over there that I can't particularly watch over here. Uh, it may be disastrous. I don't know. See, unlike Ethan Ralph, I'm not dropping emails from the owner of Odyssey <laughs> about the magical devil man at yahoo.com or whatever the fuck it was. I'm just looking for a place that I can laugh at fat, stupid people uh, uninterrupted. So that's that's my Acer Thorn, Acer Thorn solution. Two fat guys suing everybody. October 8th on Odyssey. I don't know what the channel name's going to be. I think somebody already stole Mr. Medica from me. So I, I, I'll come up with something something uh, 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 super funny and original. And then I'll put up a little announcement, and you can watch it at your leisure if you can't catch it live. And hopefully it's not a complete fucking disaster. And if it is, then I guess, I guess we just watch it over here instead. I don't know. I don't know. I'm thinking solutions here, chat. <laughs> there's so much there's so much Acer Thorn shit and I don't want to have to cut it. Like I want to be able to talk about it in depth. I want to be able to talk about who stabs your father and sues them? Who sues the government? He sent a dollar. I think it was like a dollar or five dollars. He sent money to a government official with a letter that said, if you don't send this back, you're letting me buy you. Right? And then he sued them for not uh, uh you know fulfilling their contract of being bought. Like he's unhinged. Sues all these people, loses every fucking case. Very litigious. Like, he's, I, he doesn't have money, but, like, I, he was, like, a legal aide, so he knows how to file stuff. So that's how he was able to keep doing it. As for the second guy, I don't think he's a legal aide. He just likes to sue people, so maybe he's got a little more money to him. But they're, they complement each other so well. Uh, no, I wouldn't say internet insanity. It's not like a video. Uh, but it'd be like a stream form of that chat be like a, a stream form of internet insanity yes in a way i guess that would be fair to say uh, is ricada going to join me on this i haven't talked to nick about it uh he might i think he mostly streams on rumble now uh nick ricada got banned recently or i should say nick ricada's good friend uh got banned recently off of twitter uh more than likely by the alliance of keffels and uh ethan ralph and the groipers who've been uh, celebrating that uh, Nick Ricada got banned and have been talking about getting him banned. Uh, but I don't think it really has much impact on Nick because he still pulls in big numbers on YouTube, even though he's had a bit of issues there. Uh, but I do know he streams on Rumble as well, uh, and he does really well over there. But no, I haven't talked to Nick about it. Uh, maybe I can get him to come on to talk about it. <laughs> I'll probably get sued for doing this stream. I'm sure Nick would get sued for doing this stream. Somebody's getting sued for doing this stream. So if I'm going to get sued for doing the stream, I want to be able to have a really good fucking laugh about it. And not have to watch my, uh, uh, you know, my manners on YouTube. I'd rather be able to say some naughty words that I think Odyssey lets you do. Because uh, when I was, again, on Mad on the Internet with Josh over on Odyssey, uh, we talked about, uh, uh, you know, things that you really couldn't talk about over here. It's a much freer experience. Reminded me a little bit more of old YouTube. Uh, so hopefully that holds up. I don't know. Like I said, I will, I will think up the channel name. I'll make it extra funny. An original, and then post it, but it'll be October 8th, starting at noon. Yeah, and it's probably going to be at least at least four or five hours. If we're going to watch, because, yeah, I mean, the live stream itself is an hour and a half. Just, I, I want you to go into this understanding what you're getting into, chat. It is a half-naked man who eats raw hot dogs and gobbles like a turkey for an hour and a half. It's pure, unbridled, fucking shitbaggery insanity. There's no other explanation for it. He was unaware that he was live streaming himself. This was him normally. This is, he didn't know the camera was on. So this is like this dude, this is him. This is who he really is. 
he wanders around his hooker killing apartment gobbling naked and eating raw hot dogs. That's him on his average day. The accidental live stream. That's what that is. An hour and a half of that gold. And I, I want to fucking, I want to mine that shit. <laughs> raw dog in it? Yeah. I suppose you could say it. Ah. Oh. Yeah, and then I've got like the little supplementary uh, streams that the people that he've encountered is uh, like dealt with. Like he had a big thing where he liked to threaten people, especially smaller YouTubers. I can give you some of the background. Like smaller YouTubers were getting uh, copyright struck because they were shitting on his video game reviews, and DMCA because they were shitting on his video game reviews. And then if they didn't put up with it, he would sue them. And then he eventually did this against a larger channel. Um, and that did that guy did like a, a GoFundMe. He got money together got lawyers, um, and then basically sued the shit out of Acer Thorn and filed counterclaims and did all this shit legally. And now we're at the point where we can watch him gobble like a turkey for our entertainment, and he can't do anything about it. Except, of course, he thinks if you laugh at him, that constitutes harassment, and harassment is like a threat to his life. And that's he keeps suing people about that. If you laugh at him, he literally thinks it's like a death threat, and that's the basis on which he's been suing fucking anyone under the sun. So again, I don't know. I don't know if Nick Ricada wants to jump into that pool with me. Uh, if he does, we can do it. Uh, when did this all happen? This was all within the last year, not last five years. Like Acer Thorn has been doing this really heavily for the last year. He might have been suing. I mean, the, like the other lawsuits, the the government and the university and that kind of stuff. Um, that is over years. But like all the YouTube shit has really been like hyper condensed into just this last this last year of when he's really been doing it, when he's really been going, you know, like full tilt, crazy as shit, uh, nutty squirrel kind of shit. Uh, somebody in chat, now he bitches on YouTube nonstop about how the justice system is corrupt. I could imagine it. I've got a few other big super chats. I'll read these. I'll read the rest at the end of the stream. Uh, Parker Z, have you seen people making mods to remove pride flags from Spider-Man? Yes, I did see that come up. Um, I don't. I I know that the mods got pulled down on modding sites, which is stupid. Uh, let people fucking mod what they want to mod. Who gives a shit? They're mods. Uh, from Glib Fast Simile, uh, Russia's enemies are cringe. They enjoy wearing programming socks while they force memes onto the websites we all share. Russia will not back down. We will meme NATO into oblivion. And their terrorist band of Discord cat boys, Lord Vladimir of Moscow. <laughs> And from Blue Wizard, uh, during your chat with Josh, Ted Kaczynski's gender dysmorphia was brought up. The doctor money that counseled Ted was the same money that burst, birthed our current truant epidemic with the awful experiments with those two young brothers. I did bring up money when I was talking to Josh, but I didn't know. I don't know if it was in the context of Ted Kaczynski, uh, but I do know who uh, or, uh, I do know who Doctor Money is, because uh, on one of the old uh, Tumblrism videos, I featured him and I talked about the story of the two twin boys. Uh, and his, you know, his experiment, what he did with them, and how I think they both committed suicide, if I remember right. Uh, but that's 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 weird that uh, that Ted had an encounter with our boy, the doctor. <laughs> oh, well, since we're talking about Vladimir Putin and his war against uh, uh, transgenderism, and we're talking about Doctor Money and Ted Kaczynski, we might as well talk about Kiwi Farms a little bit. Like I said, it was on with. Uh, Josh, I'm mad on the internet over at Odyssey. Uh, they did it. Can we get a round of applause? Can we get a Can we get a C for clapping and chat? Chat. Uh, I don't know how Josh pulled it off. You know, it's weird to me. Nick Fuentes will sell himself as the most censored man in America, talking about how his bank accounts are shut down, how he can't get on an uh, international flight, how everybody's against him, he's deplatformed everywhere. But then, as more information comes out, it's uh, all fabrication and bullshit. He got his money back, but didn't tell people. He was banned from flights, not by the um, the government, but by the actual airline because he was threatening a stewardess or some shit. You know, it's all, it's all just smoke being blown up your ass. Whereas Josh is literally being hunted <laughs> by governments and Silicon Valley for running a very, uh, his fucking gossip website, which is really, a, this is, there, what is special about Q Farms? It's the same kind of shit you find on Image Board or Old Fashioned Forum or Encyclopedia Dramatica. They're acting like Kiwi, or Kiwi Farms is like a, a kill factory for people on the internet. 
That's the that's what's being sold to people. All these deaths and suicides. Oh my God, it's so terrible. So he's getting everything shut down. All those providers, all the people that have anything to do with the website, walking away. Josh is left there all on his own. You know, it looks like he's on the ropes. He's never coming back. And then the website comes back. I don't know how he fucking did it. I don't know what uh, chicanery and magic he used. He's being awfully churlish. But he got he got that fucking website up and running again. And not just like a tour variant of it. It's not like just an onion site. Kiwi Farms is up and running. Get DDoSed all the time. I'm sure he's still working on that. But the point is, he somehow figured it out. All the things Nick Fuentes pretends happened to him have happened to Josh. And yet Josh is having more success getting his shit pulled together than Nick is. Explain that to me. Josh is fighting the world government and all all of the transgenders. While Nick Fuentes has a candy cane holding tap dancing Freemason take creep shots of his friends at sleepovers. Explain that to me. Explain it to me. Explain how that happens. How's <laughs> Josh having more success, Nick? What the fuck's happening here? Oh, did you see the celebrations? There were some fucking celebrations. When they thought that Kiwi Farms was dead, it was killed, it was gone, never coming back. I saw a lot of people out there celebrating it. Oh, this is fantastic. Fuck it. It's gone. It's gone forever. And yet, here we are. <laughs> He's fucking resurrected it somehow. He found a way to do it. <sighs> what the fuck, man? Oh, where was... Oh, I have to talk about this. This is... This is too good not to talk about. <laughs> this is actually this is actually pretty fucking great. So Andy Worski, after getting his shit slapped around by Salt Poppy, I'm sure you all remember that from last month, got uh, batted around like a toy, humiliated in 10 seconds. Uh, him and PPP come back, and they don't immediately start up the Kino Casino. They suddenly just drop this little piece of tidbit of uh, information on Twitter. The boys, a few days ago, uh, right before exploring the Ralph Mail Swamp video coming soon. So Andy and PPP go dark for a couple of weeks. Suddenly they're showing up in Ghost Hunter gear, fully kitted out and loaded. They've got drones. They've got 4K cameras. They've got floodlights. And they're going on a little expedition down to the bog, the bog that Ethan Ralph owns. Now, the video itself, uh, pretty phenomenal. Don't want to spoil too much, but let's just say PPP gets possessed by the spirit of a rage pig. <laughs> that might be the greatest cosplay that's ever been created. Maybe we'll watch a little bit. I don't know. Uh, the Ralph Avenue part is particularly my favorite part of that whole fucking video. Or when they're using the spirit box to talk to Ralph's dead relatives. Uh, uh, this is the greatest image I think these two have ever produced. I'm going to be honest. That is like, you know, Halloween's coming up on the 31st. I, you know, come on. I think we need to watch a Halloween trick-or-treat video with PPP going out as Ethan Ralph trying to get candy from people. Is that poop-flavored? Is that a poop-flavored Tootsie Roll Pop? Give it to me. That's that's what I want to see. But uh, they put out this video. It's 30 minutes long. It's very good. What do you think Ralph's reaction was, chat? How do you think Ralph How do you think Ralph took it? Did he, did he laugh it off? Did he say it was funny? Did he say, hey, good job. That's a... Uh, that's funny. I'm Ethan Ralph. I've got a sense of humor. Of course he didn't. <laughs> he, went, he went on cow, which is a, a board to shit post on. He went on cow and dropped Andy's passport. There's actual clips of him talking about, I got a surprise for you, Andy Worski. Oh, I think a surprise is coming up on cow. Literally the parody, the parody that PPP is doing in his video about going down to Ralph's fucking bog. <laughs> And he gets so mad. How is, what, what does that even do to somebody? You posted Andy's passport. Wow. You really got him, champ. You really fucked Andy Worski into the dirt. Now people got his passport. Now he's never going to be able to visit your bog again, Ralph. <laughs> what? I don't understand. How is that like a, how is that scary? How is that a threat? Oh, let me ask chat here. I'll pull this up here. Uh, 
There we go. Okay. If it doesn't, there's always this fucking delay when you do a poll. I will ask you, chat, before we move on from, from this. I just wanted to share the fact that Ralph got so mad he wanted to own Andy by posting a passport. Which is the dumbest fucking shit I've ever heard of. Uh, but we can watch some of it. I don't want to spoil all of it. I feel like, you know, they should get the views for it because it's an actually, it's a fucking good video. I liked it. I thought it was a good fucking video. But maybe we'll play like the um, the Ralph Avenue segment of it because it's so fucking great. I'll give, I'll give Chad a minute. I'll let you think it over, Chad. In this democracy of Jim's chat. God damn, you guys vote quick. All right. Uh, 90 to 10, I'd say that's a yes. All right, we'll, we'll do that. I'm trying to read the big ones first. Uh, beguile me for the Super Chat for 75. Happy fall to my favorite hat salesman. Love selling hats. Let's take a look at... Uh, <laughs> let me let me line it up first. <clears throat> Hold on here. I, I want to play I, I, Chapter Three, Ralph's Avenue, because I it's just it's perfection. It's so good. All right, hold on, chat, one second. Okay, let me. How do I get this off? There we go. Is that full screen enough? I think that's good enough. Let's let's watch a little bit. This is a documentary. You can find it up on the Daka Daka channel uh, from the Kino Casino Boys. It's Andy and uh, PPP taking a trip down to uh, the bog that Ethan Ralph owns in fucking Louisiana or wherever it is. However, they have to stop at a, uh, a particularly weird place they find called Ralph's Avenue. Everybody, we're hot on the trail of the bog hog conspiracy. We're getting really close. We're here at Ralph Avenue, and it's going to be about an hour drive down this desolate backcountry road to the Ralph Swamp. Over all around here, you just see like housing projects, weird, dirty gas stations, liquor stores. It's really living up to the name of Ralph Avenue. Let me tell you, and it just fucking stinks. Just stinks of fucking dirty whiskey, and you just see like weird white trash junkies around. We better get the fuck out of here. Andy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, guys, just look at this. This is the corner of Ralph Avenue. Spicy cocaine at Chicken Hut. Like, how white trash can it get, guys? Like, this is like some shit that you would see in like GTA 5, like a pre-rendered fake chicken chain. But on Ralph Avenue, seeing is believing, and it's real. It's the cocaine at Chicken Hut. Guys, guys, get a load of this one. On Ralph Avenue, the residents are so lazy, so dirty. They've had to incentivize them to wash their clothes by putting a casino in the laundromat. A casino in the laundromat. Only on Ralph Ave. Only on Ralph Ave. Guys, guys. guys only on Ralph Avenue. It's not a gas station, not a petrol station. It's a gas bar. A gas bar. Everything has to be a bar on Ralph Avenue, okay? Only on Ralph Avenue would you see that level of white track. Look at this. Check this one out, guys. Another only on Ralph Avenue. They're literally so poor here on Ralph Avenue. Gas is a buck fifty-seven a gallon. The rest of the country, it starts at three bucks a gallon. Here, it's half off because they know they've spent all the rest of the money on booze and pills. Only on Ralph Ave. All right, guys, look, we've been driving down Ralph Avenue for half hour, 45 minutes, totally desolate. There's nothing. Then out of nowhere, strip mall. Gaming Gators. Only on Ralph Ave. Are you going to find a Gaming Gators next to a payday loan place? Next to Jay Caesar's favorite pizza shop, Little Caesar's. Only on fucking Ralph Ave can it get that white trash. All right, guys, so we're on Ralph Ave. And as you can see, the only church on Ralph Ave is Church's Chicken. <laughs> it's fucking great. Oh, it's a very well done video, chat. Uh, again, you can watch the entirety of it over on Daka Daka's channel. It's like 35 minutes long. They go out into the woods. They contact the dead relatives of Ethan Ralph. 
<laughs> oh. uh, but he was not very happy about that. He got a little, he got a little bit mad, a little, a little bit angry. Ralph has a weird habit of getting uh, very pissed off at people and then doing weird shit. Uh, Nick too. And they're both like very stalkerish ex-girlfriend types, like Nick taking creep shots of Jaden and then posting them nonstop everywhere on the internet. Or Ralph, Ralph literally doing this, which I think it's like, it's almost fetishistic in the fact that he's like a glutton for punishment. I don't understand that mentality, but like if you talk shit about him, he has to see it. Even if he blocks you, he has to see it. Now, my good friend, uh, Quarantine Koof, sadly, kicked off of Twitter. Lots of people kicked off of Twitter, started going over to a place called Post. So what does Ralph do, right? I, I want to show you how obsessed he is because this is this is pretty great. So Graf is the guy that runs Post, one of the admins. On September 9th, Graf decides because Ethan Ralph is stalking people's Post feeds, which are like Twitter feeds, that he's going to like uh, lock the site down so you have to have a, a um, you know an account to see shit. Within within one day, less than 24 hours, honestly, Dick Masterson has made his own instance over on the Fediverse. So he made his own his own version of post. And then within hours of that, Ralph set up an account so he can stalk people. So this dude shuts down people's timelines so Ralph can't read them obsessively. And Ralph has to go out and beg on his hands and hoofs, Dick Masterson, to make an instance so he can stalk people to get mad at them on the internet. It's just unfucking believable. And then after he does that, right, he makes this instance to go stalk people over on post. What does he do? <laughs> he starts blocking everyone. Dick Masterson made an instance with only two people that use it. Ethan Ralph and Dick Masterson. And Ralph, as the only user of this thing, has blocked everyone he can from following him. And then he made another post. He made, a, he made another account, a secret other account. Uh, besides this one that he's blocked everyone on to obsessively stalk them because everyone lives rent free in his head. If you had seen the chat earlier, you'd, you'd understand what I'm talking about. Remarkable. Absolute sheer fucking insanity. I don't know what it is with uh, Ralph and Nick, but it's, it's really weird ex-girlfriend stalker shit. <laughs> it's like next level ex-girlfriend stalker shit. Uh, now speaking of post, let me let me let me segue into this. Why not? Oh, look at that! Look at this little Jim. All my friends got uh, executed. All my friends were mercilessly executed on Twitter, and I couldn't shit post with them in peace anymore. So I moved over to this wonderful website called Post. That's p o a dot s t, p o a dot s t. Part of the Fediverse. You know, I thought, how do I explain what the Fediverse is? Because everybody's got their, they've got their cute little explanation on it. You know, what's an instance? What's the Fediverse? You know, I, I had this great little spiel about it. It's like an MMO and all this shit. Easiest way to think of it is like um, an image board. So the Fediverse would be 4chan, which would be the entirety of the Fediverse. And then every instance, which is user created, would be its own board. So, you know, some boards are like poll, some are like A, some are like V. And I'm on, I'm on post. POA.ST, which is a great little instance. If you want to shit post and say naughty words, they let you do it. And Ethan Ralph can obsessively stalk you over there too, if you want to join in the fun. Now I know a lot of people are confused. What's that website? How does it work? If I set up a membership, I don't understand instances in Fediverse. Let me tell you, I got something special for you. So here's the this is the account of the guy, one of the guys that runs post. His name is Graf. And he loves it. He fucking loves it when new users make accounts and then obsessively ask him questions. Now, if you're interested in saying the N-word without repercussions, if you want to know what Twitter's like where you can say the N-word and you want to make a post account, be sure to message this guy immediately after doing so. Tweet at him or post at him, I guess I should say, and ask him innocuous, annoying questions. He fucking loves that. He was just saying earlier today, I hope a bunch of people sign up for this website and then spam the fucking shit out of me with questions that they don't even care about. They don't even give a shit about the answers to. He just he just wants you to fucking message him. 
Ask me, ask me what an instance is for the 40th time. I need you to do that. Please upload an image that's a terabyte large. My database can handle it. So he is, he's explicitly said if you join post, message him immediately and ask him all the questions you have. There are others too, by the way. So post, POA.ST is one. Uh, there's chudbuds.lol, which is another one. Uh, shitposters.club, I think. There's quite a few. You want to find the one that really suits you. It's like your own personalized Twitter. But you can still yell at other people on other instances. It's pretty great. I've been saying the N-word quite a lot. Uh, so have my good friends. And I know Graf loves it. In fact, he wants to like spell check that for you. Maybe you're not spelling the N-word right. So you should ask him. After you make your account... You should message him and ask him, am I spelling the N-word right? And then spell it for him a few times in different languages. Really, he's multilingual. He's very talented. As many languages as you could think of, just ask him, is this how you say the N-word graph? Is this how you spell the N-word? By the way, my image is one terabyte large. Is that a good upload size? I made a GIF, I made a GIF that's 428 uh, gigabytes. Is that acceptable? It's only two seconds long. Does that work? Is that good? I made a GIF... It's 428 gigabytes large uh, graph, and it spells the N word. Is it doing it correctly? If I if I if I figured this out, <laughs> uh, but no, I've been having fun over there. It's actually nice uh, to be able to use social media and say uh, uh, just stupid shit again. Uh, it's been good. I'm a good boy though. Uh, you know, see moshi moshi. You know, wink wink nudge nudge. <clears throat> Lots of good friends over there. Lots of a hogs. Uh, you got all the American first people uh, seething and pissing in their litty bo or litter boxes, like, you know, Ethan, uh, because <laughs> they're stuck on Dick Masterson's version, which has two users. And really, it's just, it's Ethan Ralph's uh, holler box. That's what he should have called it. Dick, instead of calling it Spurg City, you should have called it the holler box. That's all it is. Uh, Dick got bullied off of it, so he doesn't use it anymore. So it really is just Ralph now. It's literally Ralph screaming at people behind a block button on his own instance as everybody just mercilessly shits on him and, of course, runs over to ask Graf technical questions about those gigabyte-sized GIFs spelling the N-word. <laughs> Have fun with that, Graf. Uh, and the other ones, uh, yeah, again, it's like, I think it's, it, it's chudbuds.lol shitposters.club. I, I don't, there's a lot of them. It'll take you a while to find one that suits you. But if you want to say the N-word, oh, if you want to be an edgy boy, if you want to be an edgy boy, there you go. It's in there for you. What was it? We had a little more here. I mean, this feels like an every month thing, but why not? Uh, so once again, uh, more people in America first have been arrested. Isn't it interesting, Chad? that after Baked Alaska signed his federal plea deal with the government for January 6th, that all these people that are connected to America First in some way or some form are all getting arrested one after the other. We have the newest group, which is a group of five people. Uh, here's Nick Fuentes' commentary on this. This is his uh, response to their arrest. Uh, contrary to what has been reported, these five were arrested in connection to J6 are not groipers. Uh, he starts listing their names and calling them Jewish wignats. Which, I don't, how are you a Jewish wignat? How does that work? Is that like a Laura Loomer thing? I remember she used to go around telling everybody she was Jewish, but wanted to have Aryan Jew babies. But if that was the case, Nick wouldn't have a problem with it because he endorsed her run for office. So I don't know. And here's Nick again. Uh, it's regrettable that they've been caught up in the DOJ dragnet for January 6th, but I am not, nor do I wish to be associated with these losers. You know, just to give everybody a quick reminder here of, you know, how it's been going for like the last month and a half to two months of people nonstop getting arrested who are connected to Nick Fuentes after, again, after Baked Alaska signed that fucking plea deal. Let's, uh, let's take a look here. Well, there was a San Antonio teen uh, Latino Zoomer who threatened uh, to do a shooting spree at Turning Point and also got arrested for child pornography. Uh, there's that one. Of course, can't, can't forget about that one. Um, oh, there was another guy from Huntington Beach that got arrested. Of course, can't forget about him. Uh, and then a group of them all got arrested. So it's really, it's really fucking strange to me, chat. You know, when I think about it, what does this all have connection? You know, well, let's see what happened. Uh, Baked Alaska signs a plea deal 
And now all these people are suddenly getting arrested. Really makes you think, hmm, really got the noggin jogging, chat. I'm not sure. I'm not 100% sure what's going on here. <laughs> so that would be, oh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven people. Seven people in, I think, three months. Ever since Bake turned that phone over. Ever since he gave that information up. Now, he swears. I also find it funny that Bake, Bake literally went to January 6th because he thought the election was rigged and he didn't trust the government. Well, then turn around and say, the government said I haven't snitched on anybody. Kind of a mixed message, Baked. If you're telling people you don't trust, if you're telling me the government rigged an election and that they're all in on it together and it's a conspiracy, why would you then expect me to trust the government when they said you're not a snitch? Hmm. It's, oh, I got a bit of a headache, a thinking headache, Baked. I don't, what are the puzzle pieces? If I try to put them together, multiple people all getting arrested for multiple things, but all somehow connected to your group and have been to events with you guys, all after you turn your phone in and signed a plea deal? Oh, my head hurts a little bit. <laughs> oh, I don't I don't know. I don't know, chat, would that mean he's he, he's a glow-in-the-dark agent? I'm not sure, chat. I'm, I'm, all I'm going to say is this. I would not be surprised at all if in the next month more, uh, you know, groipers get arrested. And, of course, Nick will release statements saying, I've never met these people. Nick said, I don't know who Latino Zoomer is. And then film and photos of him come out hugging the guy and signing his merchandise and going to events with him. Nick said, I don't know who any of these guys are that got arrested. Then film and video come out of them at all the events. And Nick is defending one of the guys in a Twitter session uh, because of a joke. It seems to happen quite a lot, but Nick disavows them immediately. Bake sends them up the river, and then Nick says he never knew him. <laughs> I would be, I'd be a little, Ralph, here's another hint for that sleepover, that midlife crisis sleepover at Ali Jamal's house. Uh, check Nick and Baked for wires. Now, I know they like half-naked tickle fights and come hunting with those black lights. So when they come over, just tell them you're having a half naked tickle inspired come hunting session. So you can get their shirts off to check for wires. Usually that's how the feds do it. They got a, they got a wire on them, but now it's like all high tech. So you got to really look cause it might look flesh colored. So you're gonna have to feel them up a little bit, but they'll like that. <laughs> Trust me. They will. They'll let you do it. They'll let you inspect them. They won't even think any, they won't even, they won't even think twice about it. Uh, yeah, I mean, I suppose, chat, I could talk for uh, one second. I don't really care where Ethan Ralph is. Like, I, I know. There's this great big gunt hunt. Uh, where in the world is Ethan Ralph? It's like some weird variant of Carmen San Diego. He's like, he's gone into hiding, and he's daring people to find him. I understand the allure of it. Like, you know, he will not divide us. People are really into this. Like, where is Ethan Ralph? I don't really give a shit. Um, but there's a chance he's living in Mexico, that he's fled to Mexico. I don't know if it's true or not, but it's fucking funny. And I'm just going to roll with it. I think Ethan Ralph is in Mexico. Uh, people have speculated he's fled to Mexico and is living there, and they based it on three things. Um, one, he's a coward who's running away from financial responsibilities. That's the big thing. Uh, but the, uh, and then also Josh, Josh literally made a shit post saying, uh, if I was Ethan Ralph, if, you know, if I had freedom, I, what did Josh say? He like baited Ralph into moving to Mexico by saying, God, I wish I could go to Mexico. Just like Andy said, God, I wish I could go to Portugal. So, I mean, that's, there's, there's a really high possibility Ralph has done this. Uh, but they're basing it off the fact that Ralph kept having internet connectivity issues every time there was an earthquake in Mexico. <laughs> I swear to God, people matched it up. It happened like two or three times. There'd be an earthquake, and then Ralph's stream would die. And then once internet service was restored in a certain part of Mexico, Ralph would be back on immediately. And so they're like, holy shit, he's living in Mexico. And then I guess there's a picture of him or uh, his, his girl put up where there's like an adobe building with like a tin roof. It looks like some third world fucking hut in the middle of rural nowhere. So we're not talking like a big Mexican city or the suburbs. We're talking like out in the fucking boonies or some shit. <laughs> I love the idea that Ethan Ralph, who doesn't speak a lick of Spanish, is living out in the boonies in Mexico, assaulted nonstop by earthquakes and probably running for his life from the cartels. Because they want it was like a sideshow exhibit. <laughs> 
Like, look at this guy. He's got two stomachs and four tits. <laughs> we can scare we can scare the narco officers with him. They'll think we've genetically modified a super soldier. Uh, but yes, that that's the Ethan Ralph and Mexico arc. I don't know if he's there. Uh, again, I really don't give a shit. Uh, but it is fucking humorous to me to think that he's that he fled to Mexico to get away from child support or some shit. <laughs> or that he thought it was like a tax haven. Or I, maybe they don't have extradition. I don't know what your justification for moving to Mexico would be. Like what the, the allure would be if it's like economic or, uh, you know, related to the law or something. But just, just you know, if they're right, if their speculation is right, anytime there's an earthquake in Mexico, Ethan Ralph will not be able to stream. That's the only way they can confirm it. He's going to have to buy like an, a satellite uplink phone to fuck with people uh, to convince them that he's not down there anymore. Fled the country. Holy shit. Jumped across the border to Mexico. Oh, there, yeah, there was a, like a previous kill stream too where he had like some weird shit in his search history, like U.S. Embassy and applying for citizenship in Mexico or something. So people are like piecing this together. This Carmen San Diego like inspired hunt of where the fuck in the world is Ethan Ralph. <laughs> they've landed. They've landed on the glorious country of Mexico for now. I mean, can he get back in the country? If he's in Mexico, can he get back in the country for that sleepover, that midlife crisis sleepover with Ali Jamal? I don't know. Uh, it's gonna require it's gonna require some work, isn't it, Ralph? I doubt he did. Ralph Ventura. Do you think he's changed his name? Holy shit! Do you think that's why Dami Pesos is back? Maybe Dami Pesos is like a high-level cartel member. And the moment Ethan Ralph went into like Mexico or South, you know, Middle America or South America, he activated. The cartels they tapped him on the shoulder, and they're like, "Hey, <laughs> we're tasking you with the rage pick. You need to reactivate Dame. Just keep your cover of doing those uh, TYT videos. Nobody knows you work for the uh, Sinaloa cartel. <laughs> it's our fucking secret, Dame. Ja 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 is like his." It's like his Manchurian candidate phrase for when they activate his assassin skills. Dami Pesos is deep cover like uh, Michael Alberto is. He's got those kill commands deeply ingrained in his brain. Ralph is unaware of this as Dami is searching the Mexican countryside looking for Ralph. I love it. This story needs to be, yep, that's what I'm going with. Ethan Ralph is dodging earthquakes in Dami Pesos. <laughs> Child support as he hides under a tin roof in the Mexican sun. That's what we're that's what we're sticking with, chat. That's what we're doing. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, let's pull this up here. Hold on. Sorry. One second, chat. Okay, there we go. Oh, my little chats. All right. So, uh, like I said, we will do our Acer Thorn, uh, I'm sorry, our Fat Guys Sue People uh, stream, because it's more than just Acer Thorn now, it's a, a second psychopath. Our Fat Guys on YouTube Sue Everyone stream on Odyssey, October 8th at noon. If it's a complete shit show and a disaster, you know, we gave it a shot. Again, hopefully, hopefully, it'll work. Because when I stream with Josh, and they're like 5,000 watching, it was, it was okay. Some people had issues, but not everybody. I mean, it, it seemed to work okay. And the replay was up, and there was no issues with that. We'll see how it goes. We'll give it a shot. October 8th at noon on Odyssey. I will post it on the community tab so you can go take a look. <laughs> we'll go with that and see how it works. Hopefully it works out well. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, aside from that, uh, again, if you sign up over at Post, make sure to just spam messages at Graph, asking them, all about the N-word and how to spell it. He loves it. I'm sure he'll love it. Uh, also, other people will be able to help you out with other instances and recommendations if you're looking for something different. It's really a customize-your-own-shit kind of vibe. I've, I've been using it for a few weeks, so I'm, I'm not 100% familiar, uh, but it works for me. I haven't really had any issues, you know, except for uploading terabytes of dolphin porn. Seem to fuck their database up a little bit. But you live and you learn, chat. You live and you learn. So with that, uh, uh, you know, hopefully we don't all die in a fucking nuclear apocalypse. 
I, I don't think we're going to. Listen, I think, I think the UN and NATO are going to come out with a binding resolution, <clears throat> a binding resolution, saying that Keffels needs to shut the fuck up. And that's going to satisfy Putin enough that he's going to be like, okay, I won't use nukes. Look for that to happen in the next week. That's my political insight for you. Hopefully the bright future ahead uh, doesn't uh, burn our eyeballs. And we'll be back here for a uh, Chud Bud stream for Year of the Chud in October. At the very least, hopefully we can make it one more week so we can laugh at Acer Thorn before the nukes start falling. I don't know. But that's what we're going to aim for. I hope you've had a great month. I hope the month upcoming is great for you. Uh, we'll take a small break. I'll grab another drink, and I'll read over uh, Super Chats like I usually do. Uh, for everybody that came out, uh, thank you for coming out. Uh, for everybody that's going to take off, have a good one. Anybody else, stick around. Give me a few uh, seconds here. Let me uh, <clears throat> let me grab a drink because my voice is dying out on me, and we'll jump into Super Chats. So uh, it's a short break. There we go. I'll just put on one of the opener videos, and I'll be back in a few minutes. Hello, everyone. You know who this is. Yet, you have absolutely no idea. Of course. Wow. Somebody gonna be famous. Real famous. <laughs> I sit here writing to you now with my exceptionally long penis buried deeply and normally into my vagina butt. Isn't that neat? Charlie Hunter 77 has joined the game. Call 911. This place needs to be swatted. It's obnoxious. You have a bully cabal. You don't find people being bullied into suicide on 4chan. I mean, this is ridiculous. Okay, if he says any more bad words, I'm going to hang up on him. He doesn't own Kiwi Farm, and he died last night. A little kid named Moon owns Kiwi Farm. I'm sorry, I'm a soy-filled bitch with like your videos. Aim, aim, aim. If we get Donald Trump just to tweet out, I mean, it, you know, just a tweet that mentions the hashtag game again, it, it, it doesn't even necessarily matter how we use it. Man, the blue check marks are going to shit their fucking hands. It's 2019. I can't believe anybody believes that. Get in fucking ball of water. True. I bet you when Jim finds out, he's gonna just give me so much shit. One never knows when the homosexual is about. I've had over 1,000 rejections in real life, 2,000 rejections online, so that's 3,000 rejections total. I aim as well as possible. I aim for obese women, ugly women, ideally ugly and obese. I would do anything just for a 300 pound ugly white girl. I said it's not even hot. You are not allowed to bring her to the hospital. No. No, you get no permission to fucking do it. You gotta be kidding. It's, it's just like this declaration. This declaration, right, of male dominance. Uh, put that in your pipe. I definitely cheated on Super Mario with Sonic the Hedgehog. Stop doing this stuff. He's like the blue uh, seductress who takes me out into the night and does wonderful things to me. Enough! Stop! <laughs> How can a Yorkshire Terrier live in the wild? It's in plain sight, but you just don't see it. You know what I mean? Okay, Chad. All right, we're back. We're back into settle to let me let me put a little thing up so anybody that's walking in is like, why is he? Why is he just reading super chats? What the fuck? All right, let me just uh, give me a second to scroll through the worst system YouTube's ever made when you try to read shit. God, you think after all these years they would just streamline this, but no, they don't. You've got to go like through fucking forty-two hoops, forty-two hoops to read shit. Okay. Just make sure everything's good here. All right. Now now it's the nice, comfy super chat time. Uh, uh, <laughs> chat. 
as we go through this. From uh, Vladik07, after an accident, my dog, 15 years, couldn't walk, so I had to put him uh, to sleep. He had four days to recover. I don't know if my decision was the right one. Have you been in the situation with the dog, Rip Loki? Uh, yes, I have. I used to have uh, two Boston Terriers. Uh, they got really old in age. Um, one of them ended up having uh, like a, a seizure disorder, uh, where if he got overheated, he would have seizures, like violent ones. Uh, the problem was he liked to used to go under furniture, um, and so he'd get overheated all the time. And there was one time that I had to lift a bed up with my shoulder, like the entire thing, the frame and all, so I could get him out from under it, because um, otherwise he was going to hit his head against like the you know like the metal underpinnings or whatever they'd be called. I fucked my shoulder up really bad on that one. And at the same time this was going on, because he got older in age and developed this, uh, the female dog uh, ended up getting like an eye disorder where she wasn't producing tears. So I had to put drops in and ointments in uh, for quite some time. But they got, it just got to the point where they got so sick and so old um, that, that I had to put them down, uh, which is really hard if you're a pet owner. I'm sure it's the same if you're a cat, you know, if you've got cats. Um, but yes, I've been in that situation and it sucks. Uh, from Laparty. Uh, Chud buds rise up from nut busta. Every physical conversation or confrontation with men ended with Ralph rolling on the floor once by digi bro and his friends while they screamed about the power of friendship. That's why he goes after their wives. Uh, yeah. Ralph likes to go after people's wives because he's afraid to go after them uh, from evil bunny. I think I read this one, but buddy, buddy C or seg money as promised from half chub in it days off after seven night shifts uh, and we get a year of the Chud stream. Can we get a motherfucking uh, RRU in the chat? A uh, year of the Chud continues to go strong. From Jocko Johnson, time for my monthly shekel donation to the true and honest weatherman. Like you said before, laughing at tyrants diminishes their power. So thank you for continuing to put them in their place. Jim, from James Smith, is it possible to put winter hats on the store? Uh, what do you mean by like winter hats? You mean like a snow themed hats, literal winter hats or... I, I'm not sure. I guess I don't know what you're asking for. Do you want like snowflakes or uh, snowmen or, or something like Christmas themed? Maybe I, I could try to think something up. I mean, I've seen the creativity I put into it, so I don't know what you're going to get, uh, but I will, I'll take a look into it. I said I do the little swatty squad stuff and it took me like two months to remember to do it. But um, there you go again. It's, it's up on the store. It's available. If you're interested, there you are. So uh, maybe possibly I'll look into it. Uh, from laughing my uh, fucking ass off, Schwarz, uh, nice new intro, Shutter. From Carnizzle, some funding for more of your cancer sticks. Always need more of those. From Aunt Hagus, ever better, uh, uh, even better cover for this month. From Arclight, cheers, Jim. Uh, William J. Nothingburger Esquire. Jim, have you seen the K or KAP video? Uh, on you. I've tried watching it, but I think it gave the same cancer you're dying from. Love the streams. Ralph's self-destruction has been highly entertaining. Uh, yeah, actually, I watched it when it premiered. Um, I was in the chat while it was premiering. I thought it was pretty good. Uh, my favorite part out of it was the Acorn Story one, with the uh, animated uh, Acorn Story. Uh, a pretty, pretty fucking Kino. From Terry Hessigles. Hi, Lucas. From Captain... <laughs> uh, uh, Captain uh, Sticks there. I'm not sure how you got that word through YouTube, but congratulations. No stupid self-referential comments. Just sending love from the eye of the storm, the brown one. From James Smith. Ralph loves you more than he does Christ since he watches your streams religiously. From CMOS4044. Hi, Jim. Have a pack on me. From Maggie Ellis. Jesus Christ on a popsicle stick. I need TP for my bunghole, but I love you endlessly, Medicare, my brother, and cancerdom. Uh, there's a message from Solo Mo or Solo Mono Lieto, but uh, there's nothing there, so I'm not sure what happened. Uh, from Logit90, is this a hat? Everything's a hat, and all hats are for sale. If you're going to give me an opportunity, I'm just going to shill the shit out of that. Oh, my God. Kurt Eichenwald, look away. You'll have tentacle seizures again. Everything's a hat. Uh, Big Krusty, as Carl from Who Are These Podcasts Reach Out Yet? I need this collab. Uh, I, uh, well, I, I've had different people reach out to do um, shows. I'm not 100% certain if I remember he did or not. I've had other people. Uh, I'll just be honest with you. I physically, I'm very fucked health-wise. <laughs> it's not good. It's not great. Uh, it is what it is. Um, I just, I don't have a lot of energy to do a lot of streams unless I'm super motivated. Like the Acer Thorn thing I really want to do. 
Um, and like the Josh thing I wanted to do because what happened to him was bullshit. Uh, but I haven't really uh, been jumping at the opportunity to go on podcasts, uh, though I have talked to a few people and will try to work out, you know, showing up and stuff. But uh, just health wise, not great. <laughs> so uh, what can you do? Hopefully I get to live long enough to see the nukes fall. Uh, that'll be satisfying. From Centaur Fetish, I just want to give a shout out to my fellow Okeet Obros. There's a meetup behind Ramen Shop right now. I will buy a hat for each of the persons that show up. Okito san dai shori. From To Be Fair, hope you guys uh, got your food buckets ready. Also, would you ever go on the biggest problem of the universe? Of the universe is that Maddox show? <laughs> I don't think I did a video shitting on Maddox. I don't think he's ever going to have me on his show. Uh, from Polyfrog. Now with World War III looming over us, what are your doomsday plans? I'm going to pop out my favorite pl or Fallout playlist and stand outside smoking my last cigarette. Oh, I don't know. If we're talking like total nuclear obliteration, if it's like, if it's like the big show, you know, um, I, I don't know what I do. You know, every time there's like a conflict that escalates, what I love to do, because uh, I mean, it escalates, then it always de-escalates. But anytime it gets a, a little hairy out there and they're talking about a nuclear Armageddon, well, what I like to do is go watch those old shitty made for TV movies uh, that tried to scare the shit out of you. I think one was like the day after tomorrow was the American version. Uh, but the best one out there is Threads. If you want to watch like a nuclear apocalypse movie that's free on YouTube right now, uh, that's just pure depression and darkness about a uh, world war with nuclear weapons, it has to be Threads. Because nothing, there's nothing positive about it. It's just the most bleak film you'll ever watch. But every time something like this happens, I end up watching all that shit all over again. Or some of those, uh, some people have made like some pretty good YouTube videos about, uh, you know, uh, television broadcasts right at World War III. Uh, there was one that was made like four years ago by a guy that faked a BBC broadcast that's an hour long. Uh, and weirdly enough, talks a lot about Russia and it has Russia say a lot of the things it's saying right now. And involves a lot of escalation in Ukraine. I don't know if he had like a crystal ball or some shit, <laughs> but it's pretty fucking remarkable. Uh, I'll be honest with you. Uh, so I probably do that. You know, I probably part of my doomsday plans would be just watching doomsday shit really fits the motif. And then I'd probably, I don't know, I'd play some video games. <sighs> maybe, maybe uh, I just, you know, relax with the wife and uh, uh, watch. I don't know, what would we watch? I don't know. We'd watch something. Probably a comedy. Well, if we wanted to watch a comedy, we'd look out the window as the bombs fell. Uh, probably same old, same old. Uh, from AG, bless you, Cancer Man. A loser in a suit. The future is bright. A nuclear fusion bright. From Eat1337, they want to drop nuke or they want to drop nukes, because then we'd all glow in the dark and they couldn't tell the difference between the feds and civilians. From Action Man Professor Hater, World War Three, aka Chud War One. From Cosmic Dogarin, uh, we're gonna bulldoze Ukraine and replace it with a 90% parking lots. I'm telling you, that's how we get out of this recession. <laughs> from Bradford Mitchell. Jim, come on, don't you remember the Cold War days? This is nothing. Mix up some Tang and open up some Pop-Tarts and be all Gen X and just don't give a shit. You know, uh, that is true. But that was a Gen X mentality, wasn't it? I mean, uh, that's a latch key kid syndrome. They're so, they're so, you know, Gen X is so used to being neglected that they just tuned everything out. So when they're like, oh, it's, it's a Cold War, man. Everything, everybody's going to fucking die. They're putting on their Zumbas and so, you know, they didn't give a fuck. Listen to some MC Hammer or something. <laughs> enjoying some delicious whatever happened to tang does that even exist anymore the astronaut drink right the powdered shit i i don't <laughs> i don't know what happened to tang or is that like a beverage product i'm thinking of something i'm almost certain tang was the astronaut drink but i can't remember from pasmic a jimmy glorious irish weed thank you for doing the ballad of mr medicare part one with kill all pedos absolutely glorious sorry that your uncle turned out to be such a degenerate can't wait to see part two. <laughs> well, thank you very much. From Angry Man, uh, Rust Tragedy is only one-fifth of internet drama. From Cairo, uh, Sep Medicare, I saw my anime collection and ran away. Speaking of which, uh, what do you think of the Trigun reboot? I haven't really been paying attention to the Trigun reboot, so I don't know what to think, I guess. Um, oh, there's another reboot they were doing, too. Oh, my God. What's the... It's the one with the... Um, I'm completely fucking blanking on it now. Uh, he had, like, the X cut on his face, and he had the uh, backward sword where he wouldn't use the blade on people. 
Uh, somebody in chat has to help me out with this shit. T somebody has to know what I'm talking about. I see in chat too. Tang exists. Uh, good to know. Ronan Kenshin. There we go. Thank you, chat. I knew somebody would pull it. Uh, from Legato Mati. Give me Walmart or give me death. We had it too good with 24-hour Super Walmarts. If you show around closing and the employees are lying and saying we're closed, just say you work there and they'll let you in every time. From Project Noble, we're all going to glow in the dark. Uh, more than likely. From Castle's Keep, thoughts on the upcoming Evil Dead Rise movie. I'm completely unaware of it. Though I, I did see like a trailer for, uh, what was it, Hellraiser, which does have me partially interested, so hopefully it's not a complete shit show. From Thick Cheney, thanks for the years of entertainment. Have a pack of smokes on me, Daddy Jim. From Hiroshima, where's the trucker hats, Jimbo? Fuck, I know I forgot something. I, I will work on those. From Not Y-A-L-C, still waiting on that Nigerian scammer stream you promised back on Streamy. Could you give a shout out to my friend Sneed? Uh, well, I don't think we're getting the Nigerian scammer stream. Uh, Streamy's been dead for about five years. That's that's where your stream is. From Joseph Oglethorpe, uh, that stream you did with Josh was great. Love you, Jim. From Sus, uh, can you do a Medicare clock on the store? I believe I saw this one already. Uh, yeah, let me get that Medicare clock made. I'm sure everybody's waiting for that one. <laughs> Maybe every time it strikes uh, midnight, I'll have it in Haberman's voice say Duder or talk about being the Juggalo King. I'll have the entire uh, Duder song of Haberman play at different, you know, like a different uh, line or chorus every uh, position on the clock. Make it very musical. From Blade 2.0. My tarred mailman delivered my hat to the wrong house. Now some lucky future chud bud has a new nice hat. Oh, well, time to order another from Blood Ru How weird is that? So, he said, you, uh, they're going to be like, what the fuck is this? What the fuck is a chud bud? Who's, who's sending me chud bud hats? What the fuck does that even mean? Well, I'll take it anyway. From Bloodroot Bane, do you like anime? Well, yes, I do. Arias Rafagal, admit it, you always wanted to go out with a nuclear bang. Uh, meth beer. Toxic salt will flow as Ekdolf Pigler reacts to June the King's Keemstar dock on Saturday. DSP will lash out at impotent piggy rage after rejecting 50k in Keem's blood money to beg from wheelchairs. I still don't know uh, why DSP said no. Uh, did he not want to be associated with Wings and the others? Was it Wings Boogie and him? Uh, but 50k is 50k. And DSP seems like he needs the fucking money. I still don't know why he would turn that down. From uh, Al Lunar, uh, would it be possible for you to sing happy birthday for the birthday boy Tommy C today, Jibbo? It sure would mean a real lot to him. Uh, my voice is fucked already. There's no way I'm getting through the happy birthday song. Uh, though, happy birthday, Tommy C. There you go. From Viserant, I spent more on the super chat than Nathan Wassels ever did on his daughter. For the ghost, not the cam. Hey, Jim, big flan. Uh, would you consider doing an interview with Red Pill Gang TV? He was like, uh, he's like Nick Fuentes if Nick was smart and not uh, a fac. <laughs> That's how you spelled it. Um, I actually, I watched Red Pill, uh, and I've watched uh, Jaden. I watched most of the most of the a hogging content out there. is uh, pretty entertaining. A uh, good way to kill some time. From some uh, figut who smells it like uh, the A and E as you would in ether. Uh, Nell's refusal to give up is something everyone should emulate. Uh, another one from Ronaldo Trinoli uh, for two, but there's no no message on that one. Uh, the Rage Pig, it's not true. Uh, from some again, Nick's been wanting to oust Ralph going as far back as those leaked Telegram posts in January. It'd be funny if it, if this is true. I get the feeling he's probably had enough, but we'll see. From uh, Zixren, Zyxren, how do I say your name? Because I'm butchering it. Uh, thanks for the years of entertainment, Jimbo. From Frostback, Thanks for the years of laughing at speds, feds, and people off their meds. Have some smokes on me, Jimbo. Thank you. Uh, Nut Busta. Hey, Ralph, look. Over 7K views yet seem to be struggling still. What's uh, considered falling off when you're super chat money to your viewers instead? Oh, that's right. I believe Ralph said uh, Jim won't hit 10K, which he was right on. I didn't today. But then he also said Jim won't hit 8K, which I'm pretty sure I hit 8,500. You know, Ralph, 8,500 I think is more than Fuentes plus your entire streaming platform combined. Still here. It's really weird, Ralph. Didn't Nick say he was going to end my career? Uh, we're in fucking September, and I'm still making money and pulling in viewers. 
There are 5,600, what, what do you got? 5,500 people listening to me read Super Chats, Ralph. What's, what's going on? Why don't you ask Boring Bibble for his hot take on it? Ask him to put down the 20-sided die that, you know, the game he pretends to play. And ask him for a hot take on that. In between posting people's passports on cow. From Dirty Dan, uh, Michael Alberto got better treatment than those that crossed Don Sargoon. Oh, the days of Don Sargoon. <laughs> I, I wonder I wonder what Sargon's up to. I, I know he did the Lotus podcast. I think that's the name of his podcast. I haven't actually, I haven't like checked in on him. I wonder how well that's doing. Has he like transitioned completely into the podcast sphere? I think that's where the majority of money is now. You know, once Joe Rogan did it and then uh, Tim Pool followed, uh, I know Sargon kind of jumped into that. It's probably fucking safer than YouTube. Uh, Princess Cookie Pizza Cutter, thank you for all the laughs. Eat 1331, or <laughs> Eat Leet, let's just say that. Uh, Ralph Repo <laughs> performs Poo Poo No Jutsu from Some Again. Ralph is literally the reincarnation of a hog. Dmitry Kovalovyev, and I butchered it again. I hope when nukes fly, I'm at least at home so I can die with my cat, Mocha. From Mark Cuban, buy a hat, Simps, the man's dying, he needs a Bugatti. God, we all need a Bugatti. Who doesn't want a fancy car that explodes because you can't drive it right and crash it into something? A uh, giantess admirer, your Irish thoughts on Queen passing uh, or pushing daisies? Ah, uh, I, I have no thoughts on it, really. I, I know, uh, I, I like to give the Brits a bunch of shit, but I, I think that's a sore spot for them, so... As much as I like to make fun of them for licenses and being bongs and not being able to, you know, like own a spork, <laughs> you know, that time they tried to make them get pornography licenses. I know people forgot about that. I know, I know all of that, but I'll let them have their moment of silence and grief uh, and, and not shit on them too much. Uh, Jordan Ogle. Hello, Jim and my fellow Chud Buds. Just got back from the first day of the state fair and some hog hunting suey. Uh, Nagdari and the Black Pill. Hey, Jim, missing the stream right now. We'll watch the replay. Hurricanes are not real. That's true. It's all part of a conspiracy by the Weather Channel to confuse you, to sell you umbrellas you don't need. Don't, don't believe in the big umbrella industry. Hurricanes are not real. From Udon, thanks for the stream, Jim. Enjoy these soon-to-be worthless euros. I will convert them into soon-to-be worthless dollars and, uh, and be joining you in that ditch soon enough, my European friend. From Dimitri again. Honestly, I want to know about the turkey man before the nukes kill us all. Hope it's a stream. Uh, Mario Carter 13, 90% of Ralph's audience waiting for an on-air heart attack. Project No Bull, Truffle Hunter Ethan Ralph from Drooby. Hey, Jim. The nukes may get you before the cancer. I mean, that is true. <laughs> they may come in and take me out very quick. From Matt Aquino. Hey, Jim. I decided to go back to school and I'm majoring in biotechnology. Hopefully I can turn, in, er, turn you into a space marine. After I graduate and invent Gene Seed, at any rate, have a few drinks on me. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> I've always wanted to be a fucking space marine. I'm trying to not lose my place here. Oh, where is it? Uh, YouTube Super Chat function is such a fucking pain in the ass. Okay, there we go. Not applicable. It's lefties LARPing as uh, gay homeschool neocons. From Joe Dirt, Beardson is America First, Gothic King Cobra uh, JFS. Look up Boglum Chronicles for good clips of King Cobes. That's what up, Tubes. That's, uh, I guess I'll check it out. Uh, if anybody in chat wants to check it out, it's uh, Boglum Chronicles, spelled B-O-G-L-I-M. Uh, uh, from some again, Ralph and Krups, everything he's involved with. Very true. From Cole Cole, remember the dancing Israelis. What are dancing masons here to document? Also, did you see my post to find, or, or to you, that I think I found monograph? Uh, I, I might have, I might not have. I didn't know he disappeared. I thought he's still on YouTube. Him and, uh, is it Agent... I wanted to say Agent 46. It's Agent 7, isn't it? Oh, I can't remember it. The guy that LARPed is like a CIA deep cover guy. Uh, Anthony Lampley. Uh, Jim, I'm coming out of the closet. I'm queer. Well, congratulations, Anthony. Now steer, steer clear of boys like Nick Fuentes and you'll have a happy life. <laughs> because all they're going to do, all they're going to do is take creep shots of you when you're asleep. And it's just going to fuck your head up. From Fusillation, uh, both uh, Ethan's ate their own dodo. 
and Vexilum. Check out the new Nick versus the TSA thread on Kiwi. Someone pulled the case file and found Nick lied. He was blacklisted for threatening stewardesses. Yeah, I, I did hear about that. That it wasn't the government that put him down, but it was some shit he was saying about stewardesses. From Slaglust, Bibble, you th or, <laughs> Bibble, have you thought to get that tampon out of your axe wound? It's long past bedtime. But keep it away from Ralph. He'll want to taste it. From Brumity Blank, Faith Vickers is not my lover. She's just a girl who claims that I'm the one, but Xander is not my son. Dalton Moonwalks uh, to hee hee. From Glenn Lentz, longtime listener and fan. Hope you're doing well, Jim. This monthly roundup has been some of the best parts of my year. Have a drink on me, man. Oh, well, thank you. From Hellpont, it's a year of the Chud Miracle. Donnie Pesos is back just in time to set up a taco truck in the Battle of Jim's driveway. From Robert Mitchum, stage kids are the worst. From Murdoch, thanks for the good vibes last month. Chud Buds got a new cat now. I'm hoping it's going well. Uh, the Dashing Rogue, waiting to see Dalton do a French mistake. Rarest pupper, here's money to cut it out with the cancer stuff. Stop having cancer. From Texas T2, take my shekels, weatherman, and unlike the Gunt and Nick, you make more money in a month than they do in three. From White Butter, Ralph will, <laughs> Ralph will love toilet wine. It's a combination of his favorite two, or favorite two things, day drinking and crap. That's <laughs> very... Very true. Uh, Rarest Pupper again. What is your favorite Nicolas Cage movie? How the fuck do you pick a favorite Nicolas Cage movie? That's. <laughs> there, it's. I suppose it's like this. Like there's there's a clear delineation, right? There's there's a cutoff date for when there are normal Nick Cage movies and everything goes completely bonkers. And I like bonkers Nick Cage. And I don't know how to pick a favorite out of those. I, oh, it was one line from one of the movies. Uh, keep shooting his soul's dancing or shoot him again. His soul's still dancing. Like there's, there's some shit in Nick Cage movies. That's just, <laughs> it's so good. Or the one where the parents got that virus that made them kill their kids where he's the father in that one. That's a good one too. There's a lot of crazy good shit out there with him in it. Uh, E1000 mega one, two, three, if Putin starts world war three and nukes, uh, Europe will Keffel survive selling Trunshine, <laughs> or will there be a Raider, wa or Raider waifu? I don't know. I don't know the effects of radioactive trunshine. It sounds like a chemical weapon. They'll probably get arrested and uh, tried at the hog. Uh, or the Hague. I'm sorry. Well, how are you saying? Uh, Mr. Morris, Fuentes taking pictures of people next to liquor bottles almost reminds me of Jeffrey Dahmer. From Not Applicable. Chappelle said this is when you get uh, get a carrot in your A. Uh, Procon Lotor. Jim, please tell Lola that her pregnancy milkos are legit. Well, Lola, you, you heard him. And Lortor thinks your milkers are legit. From Robert again, uh, Nick Fuentes has to return some videotapes. From JTrap Swag 96 hey Jim, my white friend was kind into going to an all-black wedding this weekend. He needs tips for getting out alive. We're both scared. <laughs> you want me to give him tips, do you? Okay. Here's my here's Jim's great tips for getting getting out of that black wedding alive. First, you need to go up to the largest group of the biggest black men at that wedding and incessantly talk about how black people are inferior because they love it. They're going to love you for that. They're going to say thank you for coming to this sacred wedding occasion <laughs> and bringing your racialist shit right into our, our happy day. Make sure you do it just, just straight up to them. And then just start saying really offensive shit like ooga booga and just like shifting your neck back and forth. Don't do anything. Just do that for like five minutes straight and then run. Then run would be my last fucking suggestion for you. <laughs> I like to go to weddings and say racist shit to people and then, and then see if I can make it out alive. It's like the new truth or dare. It's like the new jackass. It's jackass for zoomers. That's what we, it's jackass for zoomers. That's how we do it. From Master Bait and Ethan Ralph, the Piggish Poo Poo Pillager, the Hoggish Hot Fudge Hoarder, the Swinish Scat Saverer, the Ominous Oopsie Oinker. From Parzival 3000, been watching Specs. Shout out to my boy Donnie. Not applicable. Uh, how do you rub two slots together? Both gross. From Pedro Ferrari, uh, missed you, Uncle Jim. From Ted Comet, Keffels is the new ContraPoints. From Xenomancer, stay new, stay clear, stay new, clear, stay nuclear. Uh, for posterity, Ralph's not even middle-aged, but he looks over 60 from Shitlord. Play Black Midget. <laughs> Black Midget would have been a different game. Play Black Magic 55 and stop being a wuss, bro. It's on YouTube, so it's kosher. From JB Behemoth, the voice of the apocalypse, when I burn, I want Medicare's laugh to welcome me to hell. Recovery Anonymous, 
Stadia failing shows that these mega corporations are mortal. They're willing to lose money to push people into owning nothing, but not forever. From JITCY9107, been watching since high school back on 2014 and 15, 23 now. Really, or really love your work, man. You got me through work delivering at FedEx this year. Also, have you considered a stream with Sam Hyde? <laughs> Sam Hyde does not know who I am. I won't be streaming with Sam Hyde. Like I said earlier, too, my my health has kind of taken a turn, so I don't think I'll be doing a lot of like guest guest uh, guesting on streams. Uh, the Rickster Dixter, have you ever played Dark Cloud on the PS2? Good game. Yes, I have. Uh, from Fi Shoto. I showed a work friend how the sausage is made video. He said it gave him nightmares. Good job, Daddy Jim. Uh, it's a fantastic video. <laughs> that's that's pure accurate facts. I love that video. Uh, Shitlord, change the five to S's. Uh, from Miracle Echo or Miracle Chow, a please pro a play Rama Ranch in a Ram Ranch in honor of Nick. From White Void 404, my day was pretty bad. Getting shoot now that Daddy Jim is here, my day is better. Better. Uh, let me try reading that again. My brain malfunctioned for a moment. My day was bad. Getting shot now that Daddy Jim is here. Uh, my day is now better. Are you telling me you're being shot at? I don't, know, I don't know what you're telling. Are you like on the front lines and in Russia? Did you enjoy my little spiel about the international politics? It made you relax a little. Uh, Thunder Chucky. Tell Bad Nuts he's a bad mother. Sup, Barker Z. That's why the Wii U is uh, the superior console. CJ Man 2112. Uh, ha, Medicare, you and your followers are just jealous of me and my party wife. Last night I gave her a sombrero special and it was my, or muy caliente. From Blake Diamond Archives, Lord Gabin continues to reign over all others. Steam sales are supreme. I mean, you can't, you can't beat a Steam sale. Like, the discounts you get are just fucking ridiculous sometimes. From Payne, say Payne is a great, er, okay. Uh, Payne is great at Dota and Spiffy is a trash mid. Thanks in advance, Jim. The Vile Delinquent. They're going to massacre Silent Hill even more. They're even going to make a remake Silent Hill 2. Why does Konami hate us, Jim? I don't know. <laughs> they're, they're angry they're not making easy pachinko money anymore, so now they're coming for your memories. Uh, from Dirty Dan, I think that 1K that I spent on the PS5 was great for a PS4 emulator. Uh, very true. CJ Man once more. A shout-out to Kido's Casino for uh, carrying the Shrine of Ralph's mother. They left her pills there and called her ghost and Uber for her dialysis. From Razor987, shout out to Todd, Sweet Little Eyes uh, Howard, and Austin, Catboy Destroyer, a uh, Florida man. Uh, Parker Z, have you seen the people making... Oh, no, I've read that one. Uh, from Zanich, uh, here's your monthly tithe, my good uh, sir. Praise the Chud Buds and House Jim. Oh, and no, or no cat boys allowed. From Tux Loves You, dude, you ever touch grass and it felt so good you came. I mean, I did take a week off and Spent most of the time just touching grass. It's a, a great experience. Uh, Seclaris, uh, PC is the only way to play games with dignity now. <clears throat> Love playing my cracked retail version of AC Revelations. Very cool, Ubisoft. Uh, thank you. John T. Savage, Medicare Gaming Channel, when reviews and streams with Medicare would be based? Uh, no, they wouldn't. They'd be, they'd be shit. I, I can tell you what games I like to play, which are mostly boomer shooters. Um, and, it, and like occasionally like a throwback, uh, what am I playing right now? I'm playing something on the uh, 3DS, actually. Uh, what is the name of this? I don't fuck it up. Uh, Etrian Odyssey 2, Untold Fafnir Night. There's not a lot of games out there that let you be a cartographer for whatever reason it is. But I like, I like being able to make my own maps. Um, I don't know. That's just the autism in me. For some people, it's toy trains. Uh, for other people, like Michael Alberto, it's Legos. Uh, for me, it's making it's making RPG maps of little dungeons. I don't know why that function in this stupid game series is so addictive to me, uh, but I love it. From a common common, how likely do you think that uh, Final Fantasy 16 will be a cross-gen game? I think they're trying to make it not a cross-gen game, so I don't know. <laughs> but I wouldn't be surprised if they go back on it. From demonization animation, you knocked that out of the park when you brought up Xbox One. It's amazing how much things have changed in a short amount of time. Uh, yeah, it is crazy. Uh, Rando number nine, The Wolf Among Who. Giantess admirer, the Mario Brothers movie will be a musical. Thoughts? That sounds horrible. Is that, are you fucking with me? Chat, is, is the Mario Brother movie actually going to be a fucking musical? I have to wait. There's obviously a delay. <laughs> Please tell me it's not a musical. Is it actually a fucking musical?
Did I say cross gender? Will it be a cross gender game? I don't know. I, I don't know if chat's reacted to cross gender games or <laughs> which would be a totally new fucking uh category. Or if they're if they're reacting to the musical part of the Mario Brothers movie. So is so long Gabe Bowser gonna be like the finale? It's confirmed. Oh god, that sounds awful. Even as like a jokey concept, that sounds awful. Is that why we haven't seen anything of this yet? Are they just gonna drop it on us like a nuke? Ugh. From uh, Felden's Party Palace, just got my hat and my deadbeat dad mug. Love them. Thank you, sir, for all your hard work. From Brian Shields, I own 52 games on my PS5. I love it. Sony Sisters Unite. Of course, I haven't touched it since getting my Steam Deck four weeks ago. I like the fucking Steam Deck. Um, Okay, so truthfully, I haven't been playing, like, I've been playing Binding of Isaac. You spend all this money on a Steam Deck, and then I'm playing fucking Binding of Isaac. But I've, I've I've migrated away from that and other things, but it's very comfortable. It's not it's not super heavy, very comfortable, nice, comfy fucking handheld. I like it. Uh, Rando number nine again. Uh, Mister Obtruse is not straight. Don't let him lie to you all. From HP Lefty, the fighting game scene is getting uh, is still cucked uh, to Sony for some reason. Ten times the player pool on PS4, but the games look and play better on PC. I mean that's that's always how it's been. Like, if, if you try to play, like, a uh, any kind of fighting game, really, even the really popular ones on PC, you're always going to have a limited pool. And it always seems like it's between two to 4,000 people if you're lucky. And then it drops down to maybe 1,000. And then it sits at 1,000 for years. From M or MLF577, hey, Medicare, did you play Warcraft and Starcraft way back in 98? And if so, what were your uh, what was your Battle.net name? Uh, <clears throat> well, let's see. No, I don't think I was on Battle.net. Uh, I did play StarCraft, and I did play uh, Warcraft, but not a it's like single-player experience. I don't even remember. You're, you're asking me, shut I don't remember. I used to watch a lot of... Um, a lot of StarCraft matches. A lot of the Korean shit uh, back in the day. Fuck, I might go watch that tonight. I, I haven't thought of that in forever. Instead of like all the apocalyptic movies, Threads, The Day After, and all that shit. Maybe I'll just go watch old Korean StarCraft matches. Because <laughs> those were fairly entertaining. From Herp Lusa, uh, play Snoot Game and get yourself a cute pterodactyl dino girlfriend while NATO and Russia start chucking nukes at each other, Daddy Jimbo. Uh, Horsey Productions, if Hankening sucks, then play older games on Wii and OG Xbox. From Luis, Ralph, listen to the Rama Rama No Sniffing. From Bling Blong Dinga 2, they announced a Wolf Among Us sequel. Oh, well, there you go. From Lama Dirk, Mussolini's granddaughter was actually a J-pop idol in the 80s. Look it up. <laughs> All hope is lost. Russia has Tu-160 bombers fueled, armed, and on standby. It's rumored some are carrying nukes, and there are a lot of videos of Ruskies breaking their legs. From the Rickster Dixter, Paul Bo <laughs> Buck Broke Putin. From Logite uh, 90, did I just read that we should blame Trans Ferdinand? You know, you win a prize. Trans Ferdinand. Yes, there you go. It's going to be written in the history books. From Glib Facsimile, a Russian's enemies are cringe. Oh, I read this one. From Ace 19E8, Crystal Pepsi was great. Buy the slop goy. Yeah, I just remember having a really bad experience with Crystal Pepsi. Again, potentially because it was warm, uh, but it tasted fucking awful. Uh, from K Vibes, can we hear Ralph's second shart? Love you, Daddy Jim. I don't have a clip of Ralph's second shart on play, uh, but uh, it's up on post. Uh, Michael Alberto has cataloged it on his Zannyberries account. If you want to hear the second uh, very loud shart. From Dat Boy, Fallout 41%. From Epic Yoshi. Jimbo, stop, do, or stop dying so you can stream more. Uh, jump right on that. From Bryden. It turns out Keffels was playing the long game and destroying Josh. Either way, happy apocalypse to my favorite hat salesman. From Waxican, uh, breaking news that what reporters initially thought was a hurricane, Ian turned out to be Ian Brandon Anderson on a sp on a spur out after he escaped prison and ran to Florida. From Robert Michibix, Keffel's Vladimir Putin Kiwi Farms account. 
From Hone, more 25-25. Nukes are fake. Mario Carter, 13. Tyranny without the Y. Heart Emoticon, making a phone menu would love your voice. Zero through nine, Pound Star. This call is being recorded. To leave a message, press one. When you're done recording, press pound or hang up. To reach the Sensophone, press two. You want me to say zero through nine for you? Probably because you're going to use it to do something horrible, but okay. Uh, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There you go. I'm sure that's going to get sent in as a threat to some fucking government agency. I look forward to dealing with that. Uh, DSP Historical Society. Would you become a better worldwide joke for 15K like Andy Feltsky did? Oh, would you become a worldwide joke? I don't know. What is that saying? $20 is $20. From Robot Rebel. This clown world has to be a shitpost simulation for a different timeline. You know, I was thinking about that. Let's have some deep thoughts that you'd have after you smoke too much marijuana. And uh, think about this for a moment. So there's the concept of quantum suicide, right? This idea that, um, or I'm sorry, quantum immortality, that uh, basically uh, every uh, like a variation of yourself or a different version split off in a different uh, universe in the multiverse takes your place and dies and you continue on, right? Quantum immortality. So maybe... <laughs> Maybe when you're talking about like a shitpost simulation, maybe we're involved in like quantum warfare. Really think about it for one second. What if there's a reality out there that has avoided all this clown world shit by tossing it at us like somebody would with quantum immortality and quantum suicide? We're literally involved in quantum warfare and we don't even know it by some dickhead version that spells Berenstein properly. And this has been going on for years all the way back with the, uh, with the Mandela shit. And we just haven't noticed it till now, till things got really fucking crazy. That's that's my, that's you need to light a bowl up to really get the the depth of that one. Yes, chat quantum sneed, that's what you can call it. It's a quantum sneed uh, uh, approach. That's their weapon. It's their super weapon. Quantum shit posting is the ultimate doomsday weapon. We just didn't know it existed. And now we're all, we're all paying the fucking price for it. Throw all their shit on us, on us, and there's nothing we can do about it. The Bobinator. I can't believe Joshua Moon personally turned the key in the nuclear submarine and glassed half the eastern seaboard. From Super Salty 94 TTV, Sui. Uh, Robert Mitchum X, your Odyssey name should be Tinfoil Hat Salesman. That is a good one. I, I'll have to look at it. Uh, Bling Blong Dinga, too. Again, the gobbling reminds me of the speedrunner who made his mom gobble and sent pics to the, a girl below his age. Oh, the one that gobbled. Um, Chibi Neko Demix, right? I was going to say Cloud8745, but that was a dude that, like, bitch slapped his mother on stream when he's <laughs> he playing. I can't remember what he's playing. I think that's the dude that hit his mom or screamed at her. Or got slapped by his mom. Fuck, there's some great stream uh, streams of speedrunners doing embarrassing shit out there. Uh, Asriel Dark Hour, Internet Stream Sanity from Blue Wizard. Dump your chat with Josh. Ted Kaz oh, oh, during your chat. Oh, that was a Ted Kaczynski one. From Nick Cordoka, or <laughs> Cork Adilus. Honestly tired of web drama. Prefer political talk. Well, I hope you enjoyed the, I hope you enjoyed the politics we went over. From Grocery Store, the best video game to come out recently was Cyberpunk Edge Runners, and it was an anime. From Robert Mitchum again, Kiwi Farms Forever. From Beguile Me, Happy Fall to My Favorite Hat Salesman. From Wax again, last week, Rakeda talked about Ashley Blummer, or Bloomer, uh, running for school board in your hometown. She says that parents should not be involved in children's education. Have you heard about this, and what are your thoughts if you did? Well, one, I don't even know who that is. <laughs> Two, I'm, I'm unaware this has even happened. Oh, I got, there was, there was news coverage, and I was unaware of it. Uh, of course parents should be involved in their child's education. Half the problem with the fucking world is parents aren't involved enough with really anything. From their kids' education to their day-to-day -day fucking lives to their hobbies or interests or their worries. <laughs> we've we've made a society where we've let technology take the place of a parent. We've offloaded uh, our empathy and anger and uh, parenting altogether on what's right and wrong and good and bad. 
and just let screens take over. Much easier to stick an iPad in a kid's hand and walk away than uh, put in a few hours to figure out what the fuck is going on. Uh, so I'd say that's a bad opinion that uh, parents should not be involved in their child's education. I think they should be involved. Uh, Miracle Chow, Kiwi Farms, a website that lived. Savvy, God bless Josh, and God bless the Enclave. Ralphie D, for your monthly support, would you prefer us, uh, <laughs> for, would you prefer we use the YouTube join or one of your merch store? Love you, Jim. Thanks for giving me something to look forward to every month. Uh, whatever you want to do, man. I'm just here selling hats. Just, I'm just, I'm just a humble, uh, humble hat salesman. Uh, from Nick, shout out, uh, shout out, uh, Peppa 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 for the Ralph Roasten Bunny. Nick again, Peppa Pipkin, a rabbit is the bog hog's natural predator. From Patio Furniture, Jim, I just made 400 from a fish rescue, so enjoy the fruits of my labor uh, pulling an abandoned tank through used needles to get six fish. Fuck. From Dame Pesos, hello, it's me, Mr. Mediker. Welcome to my new show called The Kill Stream. It's the only show called The Kill Stream on YouTube and the most popular one on the internet. From Necro C, Jim, can you wish my very straight friend, Mr. Abstrus, a Merry Christmas? Uh, Merry Christmas, Mr. Abstrus. I'm probably butchering that. Brulio Corno, or Cornjo, uh, late, was writing a paper for my consumer behavior class. Love you, Jimbo. Please sell me more hats. You know, it'll be easy to find me in the nuclear apocalypse, I think, if we ever run into each other. Uh, because I won't be able to pronounce anybody's names. I just butcher them fucking horribly. So if you run into a dude that's got like an armful of hats with exorbitant prices listed on them that can't pronounce your name to save his fucking life, that's probably me. So give me a cigarette as I walk away with my 28th degree burns from the nuclear apocalypse. Uh, from Random Dude, if members getting swatted down uh, by the feds like flies, Alaska really doing an amazing job as a government informant. Yeah, he's really putting the work in. From Clark McCallis, hope your condition improves soon, Daddy Jim. From Walter Dedman, you know, Nick, it was sleeping photos of everyone arrested, probably on his cell phone too. I would not be surprised. From Pedro, gun showed up in cartel execution. <laughs> Is there going to be like some international incident where we, we have like an AP article and they're talking about uh, an overweight American that started a fight with a cartel at the bar or something? I I kind of hope Ralph isn't in Mexico because he's going to get himself killed by one of those guys. Like it's not it's not Portugal or America where it's like a, a fist fight with a pimp. Like they're, they're crazy violent, man. <laughs> it's, it's the worst place you could have picked. Rick Zilla, Intercontinental a Bog Hog, from Waxigan. What do you think will fall out of Ralph when the children of Mexico play pinata with him? Uh, empty Maker Mark bottles, uh, shitty cheap cigars, and probably unuploaded sex tapes. From Eric the Red, Ralph's new name is El Gunto Jimenez Cristobal. It's me, the Lightbringer, should call it Two Guys Sui Everyone Street. I like it, I'm stealing it. You've got your wish. Uh, from Michael, Jimbo, you mentioned you played hockey as a kid. Not surprising since you're from Minnesota. Morbidly, or morbidly curious, the position did you play for defense or goalie? Also, Bibble's voice is the audio equivalent of Ambient. <laughs> it is the audio equivalent of Amblin. I'm sorry, Ambient. I don't, dude, I played hockey when I was like super young. This is, we're talking, fuck, I must have been, let's see, how old would I have been? This was, this was after T-Ball. I must have been like seven, seven or eight. And I played it for a very short time because I ended up, uh, I ended up getting a uh, fucking purpura and that was the end of my, uh, a little hockey career. And if I remember the doctor, one of the doctors saying something to the effect of, oh, well, yeah, I mean, this, this, this for some reason shows up in boys that play, that play hockey, which makes to this day, no sense to me. I'm not sure how playing hockey and falling on your ass repeatedly would do that. But at least I learned to skate. At least I was uh, I, I was out there zazzing it up. Maybe Dalton and I could do a musical number together. I could do it on ice, and he could do it on stage. And we could toss that giant uh, sassy candy cane back to each other. It's like a performance. And then I'd get my honorary Freemasonry 48-degree angle badge that I so desperately want. From Cloud404, did you see Keffel's DIY hormone website has been shut down? The owner left the internet and now claims they no longer have ties to Keffels and took their creator code. I did see that they shut down and that they're trying to walk away from it. Yes, I, I have seen that happen. From Walter Denman, Ralph is sharing 
<laughs> Ralph is sharing a shack in the desert with that other weirdo that dislikes you. I don't think he's out there. You're talking about um, Lambright. No, I don't think. <laughs> I don't think Wayne. Wayne has standards. He's not. He's not sharing that shack with Ralph. Wayne. Wayne would be like, get away from me. From the interest. I know my year of the Chud posters aren't as high quality as your watermarked year of the Chud background, but would you use a poster if I make one for the Odyssey straight? Um, I do like your art, and I see it all the time. I just, I always feel weird about using people's art, because I don't want to, like, I, I don't know, I feel like I'm stealing it. it it's <laughs> So I, I tend not to. I just, uh, you know, I have my wife draw shit for me. Uh, but yes, if you make something for the Odyssey stream, sure. But just make sure to include your, your artist handle on it. So if people like it, they can look you up. If, if you put your own promotion on it and it's clear so people can find it, I'll, I'll put it up on the Odyssey stream when I do it. From Maha Valio, Amberlin Ride and Foodie Beauty stream when. Also, please say F you to Rob, my brother. Well, Rob, uh, your brother said fuck you. Apparently. There you go. Uh, Ethan Ralph's dead mother throwing $20 in. Ralph stole my medicated knee pads to build oven for the puppies. I guess that's better than stealing my medication and making me walk to dialysis. <laughs> Pee to pray for the pups. The oven was on. From Fox Azure, take my meager shekels. I may not survive winter. Uh, none of us may. Oh, there's the one from JS got stuck at the uh, Tampa VA hospital. Oh, uh, that one I did ask. I don't know if uh, Evil Bunny got a chance to answer, though. At least I didn't see it. So I don't know if it's the same guy from uh, Harmful Opinions uh, stream. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Harmful Opinions. There are people uh, occasionally that do some really funny shit. Um, Harmful Opinions, I think, did one of the funniest fucking things I've ever seen a streamer do. The ballsiest thing I've ever seen a streamer do. Like, you know how uh, you know, people go out with, like, um, text-to-speech, and they'll they'll try to be cute, and they'll fuck with the audio so it sounds like it's loud, but it's not really loud? Harmful Opinions. Harmful Opinions did a stream. I can't remember where it was, but it had security there. So some kind of facility, some art installation, a mall. I can't remember what it was. But two security guards walk up to him and say, hey, you can't film here. And in a deadpan voice, he looks at both of them and says, oh, I'm a convicted sex offender, a violent pedophile, and the government has told me I need to have a camera on me at all times so they know that I'm not out here fucking children. And the security guards, the fucking security guards he told this to, like they'd never heard that before. And so they let him go. They're like, oh, oh, okay. Yeah, you have to have a camera on all the time because you're a violent convicted pedophile. That makes total sense. I have not laughed that hard in my fucking life. That was the funniest shit I've ever seen somebody do. God, I wish I had that clip. If somebody has that clip, if that clip still exists out there, if you can find it, it's the best shit I've ever seen. There's just, he fucking stunned them into silence. They went from high-end security guards that were going to take your camera away, and they had no fucking response to that. They had literally no response to it. He absolutely shut them the fuck down. It was the fucking greatest thing. Oh. Uh, somebody in chat, I, I remember this. I think he was in a mall. It was somewhere. It was somewhere. I was not expecting that fucking response. But it was the greatest shit ever. Oh, God. Yeah, I got to look that up. I, hopefully there's a copy of that somewhere. Uh, Double Spaghetti. It's also National Sorry Day in Leafland. Chug, uh, chug buds rise up. Bradford Mitchell. Can I send a song request for a Mexican radio by Wall of Voodoo? From Walter Deadman. Uh, give out your potatoes for strategic reserves for Halloween. Well, I will be. All these potatoes are really going to last me, aren't they? From Interest. Ralph, how many hours do you spend staring at my year of the Chud poster? I couldn't help but notice you've talked about Empire Strikes Back ever since it was released. Oh, I think I think he's uh, a little obsessed. He's probably watching you from behind the block like he is everybody else. From Ethan Ralph's dead mother, Piglet, leave Ella Malding alone. From Nor <laughs> Nor Surrealist, Gunt, stay mad, God bless Jim. And Vexelium, how can Ethan Ralph claim he's a patriot or part of a group called America First if he literally ran away from America and is in hiding? I don't fucking know. That's a good question. Uh, from Ramens, uh, first time donating. Thanks for all the entertainment throughout the years. Well, thank you. Uh, Invex Elliam again. Ethan Ralph ran away from being an American. From Ryan Cunningham, opinion on elections in Sweden and Italy. Ah, oh, dude, I've been watching people be idiots on the internet. Uh, you should have you should have noticed already from my hot takes on what's going on in Ukraine that I'm not the person to talk to about international politics in any in any form whatsoever. 
<laughs> in Vexelium, count out till Bibble troons out to become relevant while blaming Jim for forcing him into it. Oh, I can see it happening. Um, it's cinemas. It's perfectly legal to go through someone's trash gym. Get well soon. Would love to talk about Lucas and the gun sometime. From Veggie Bad. Uh, the whole Kiwi Farms ordeal seems to be white pill in disguise as Josh has proven it's not impossible to make your own internet. Also, keep making Ralph seed. Maybe we can see a live leak video of Ralph becoming an hero. Uh, and Vexelium. Can we get the entire chat saying Ethan Ralph graped Alice? I bet we can. From Bling Blong Dinga 2. I got deleted for posting songs from an old band nobody's heard of. Take this to your favorite gas station and pick up some Marlboro menthols. I don't, I don't think they sell menthols anymore. I'm fairly certain they've made them illegal. Uh, Caleb Lambright, Ethan Ralph, take a hint. Jim just isn't that into you. From Ravager123, I heard a rumor about Diogenes from BYBS Robloxing himself this year. Been trying to find an archive, but it seems to have gone from YouTube. I, I don't know if he did or not. I, I don't think he has. He might have. From Ocean Redux, does anyone have the McUrge to do a McFlip off a of McSkyscraper right now? I think I know someone who might. Also, Jim, you looking forward to the Eminence and Shadow anime coming this season? I heard it's a banger. Now, is that the one where the dude the dude gets a second into a new world and decides to LARP just for the fun of it? Like, he starts making up shit for laughs, and it turns out to be like everybody takes him serious? Because uh, that's great, if that's the one I'm thinking of. If it's the one where he's just he's just pulling shit out of his ass for the for for giggles and he's got all these people convinced that this shit is real. Uh Ocean Redox again, you, Rikada, and Josh should do one to get together before the internet turns into more of a trash fire than it already is. It would be uh crush like cozy or would crush like cozy, like a fresh pair of nuts in a CBT dungeon. Half eating hooker, I DS was a vor from heaven, designed to kill all the brax and the gays. <laughs> Uh, triggers McNickers, if you had told me a decade ago the internet would be destroyed by kosher, or kosher troons, I would have simply laughed at your face. Giant is admirer. Hello, Jim. What are all your hopes for Pikmin 4, and what are your hopes for Tears of the Kingdom? Uh, I don't think... Uh, Tears of the Kingdom, I don't know about. Uh, Pikmin 4, I just... I don't know. I want a nice, comfy, relaxing game. Uh, Pikmin games have always been generally enjoyable, so if it's not like a radical departure and they don't fuck up the basic stuff, I should be happy. Just give me a good Pikmin game. A good, solid, uh, experienced Pikmin game. That's all That's all I want. Uh, Josh Sketch Show. Hope you've been good, Jim. My parents in Punta Gorda were hit badly by iron. Uh, our yard trees are gone. The roof was peeled off. And my dad found a giant boar in our pole barn streaming on Cozy TV. Uh, hopefully, hopefully they stay safe. Tell them to use bottles of Maker Mark to lure it out. From Lord Aragon, the house always wins. From rocks, Hurricane Ian doing serious damage. Huge earthquakes around the world. Huge volcano in New Zealand could erupt. Thanks for the memories, Jim. And have you seen silent or cyberpunk edge runners? Uh, no, I've not. But I've heard a lot of people talking about it. And from Connection Air, 3K and stream hasn't started. Ralph's hollering in Espanol right now. Okay. For some reason, it reversed itself there for a moment. All right. I, I'm getting close to being caught up on super chats here. Uh, give me, give me one moment. Again, the worst system that YouTube has ever fucking created. You would think that they would have this down pat, but no, no, they don't. Okay, let's see. What? A, I don't even know where it left off. God. Okay, no, I did read that. Okay, here we go. Uh, from the music in on Jim, the stream deck can be modded to have three ter or terabytes of storage and two fans. This makes it run faster and cool it down 15 degrees. I did it to mine. Uh, there's a lot of stuff you can do it, software and hardware. Um, I'm just happy with how it is right now and have been enjoying it. I'm sure I will try to fuck with it later and do terrible things uh, that end up making me regret doing it. And then I have to pay more money to try to unfuck it. That's the story of my uh, uh, attempts at tinkering with technology. From Claire Berry, thanks for the shout out for chudbuds.lull. All are welcome. Glad to have more chudbuds. Again, that's C H U D B U D S dot L O L. Uh, there you go. From Yuri, check out uh, Aristosis Tasteless Streams of StarCraft ASL on Africa TV. It's good stuff. Uh, Peter R., strong independent single mothers who don't need no man but need money for dem programs. From Yul Brynner, uh, bend over, it's Big Jimmy time. Uh, Nitrara guy. Theory Ralph became a drug addict to LARP Breaking Bad with you. 
from uh, Daniel Davis. Jim, a winter hat is like a beanie or something similar. Maybe the Russian hat. That'd be cool. And from Planet Trendy, got to say things aren't going great after the Legoland breakup. Had a breakdown and got a grand's worth of Legos like an autist. Being a single parent sucks. I guess the nukes will cure my depression. I vaguely remember this story from a super chat last month. What Legos did you pick up, Planet Trendy? What, what, uh, uh, what, um, I don't know, what do they sell them as? <laughs> they make houses, cars, uh, Star Wars. What did you, a thousand bucks worth of it. I, well, I hope, I, this is something, you know who you need to talk to? Michael Alberto, our deep undercover guy. Now, he's deep into that shit. He probably could give you some good suggestions. Now, I think I got to everybody. I probably haven't. Let me see. Uh, well, there's one Mega Doom 95, Ethan Ralph versus Bathtub, Rob, or <laughs> Rob, Ross screaming match. Who wins? <sighs> I'm going to say Ross is going to win that. I'm going to say Ross is going to win that based on the fact that Ross could just scream and scream and scream. It's like it's the autism that compels him. It's rage for Ralph, but like you can't break through that autism. So it's, it'd be hard to defeat Ross on that. Oh, Planet Trendy, I see you in chat. I got the castle. There's a $1,000 Lego castle? Jesus. Can you fit in it? <laughs> is, this, is this like a human-sized structure? How big would that be? I'm imagining like a six-foot-tall fucking Lego castle. <laughs> Take like five weeks to make. I don't need to do a, a poll chat. I'm telling you, I'm certain Ross would win. That's just, that's a gut feeling I'm going off. Oh, the castle's 400. Okay, I gotcha. I'm not joking, though. Michael Alberto, our deep cover guy, big Lego guy, probably has good suggestions on cool shit. Uh, that would be my suggestion. All right. I believe I got to everybody. If I missed you, I'm sorry. Uh, blame YouTube and their fucking shitty system of listing chats and their dumbass monetization tab. <laughs> I've tried my best. And my voice is shit. Um, I will see you all on, uh, well, if you make it, on Saturday the 8th on Odyssey for the uh, Sui stream by Two Fat Guys from YouTube. Uh, hopefully that goes well. Otherwise, the end of the month uh, for the normal Chudbud stuff, if, or, if we're all alive. Hopefully there's no nuclear apocalypse. I don't know. Got to keep that positive energy flowing. Got to keep that, got to keep it, uh, 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 I don't know what would be a good word for it. I was going to utter out some shit from the 80s and 90s, but then you'd all hate it, wouldn't you? <laughs> I don't know. Well, let's see. What would be a good ending song? Uh, let's see. You know what? I have the perfect song, uh, considering the political situation and uh, the, the situation the world's in right now. So I'm going to let this play us out. Let me just let me just get this uh, set up here. There we go. All right. I, I hope you guys have a good one. I will see you for the next stream again over on Odyssey on October 8th or at the end of the month here on YouTube. Uh, remember, duck and cover. And if you hear the, well, if you hear the bomb go off, you're probably fucked. But if you feel the heat wave, don't look at it. It's going to blind you. <laughs> at least if you're within two miles. Don't look at it. You'll be tempted to. Don't do it. You're going to go blind. Have a good one, Chad. The world is burning. Let's masturbate. People in the Houses of Parliament masturbate. People in Buckingham Palace, they masturbate. People at the United Nations, they masturbate. Watercolor artists, they masturbate. Lollipop ladies, lollipop men. Masturbating. People living in substandard housing, not able to afford acrylic paint. They smash up bus shelters, and they also, especially some of the 17 year old boys, they masturbate. The world is burning. Let's masturbate. Let's, let's. 
Let's singularly on our own, all together collectively, in celebration, in celebration of life. Don't be a stranger. The world's burning. Let's, 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 if we do nothing ever again in our lives, let us masturbate. All together collectively, let's masturbate. You and me. The world is burning. The world is burning. Burn now. Now. Like a family. Whole world. Masturbate.